Good afternoon and welcome to Clare GA TV for the Intermediate Hurling Championship Final of Clare for 2019 between St. Joseph's Dura Bearfield and Broadford. I'm joined here by 2013 All-Ireland winner and goalkeeper uh, Pa Kelly from Ina Kilimona. And Pa, looking at the two teams, I suppose we have a, an interest in, and hopefully a, a close contest in store for us. Yeah, this is going to be a serious battle, Sean. Um, plenty needle in this game, I'd say there's, there's history between these two teams. They met in 16. It was a serious battle. They met earlier on the year. I think um, Broadford came out on top on that occasion, so I'd say today will be a serious contest and uh, it will be only a pint or two, I'd say, in it in the end. Yeah, as you said, they have met already in round two of the championship with Broadford scraping through by that win by a point. And uh, I suppose as they've continued on their path in the quarter final, they went to the, the original penalty shootout first ever in Clare uh, against Six Mile Bridge in Tulla uh, before progressing to the final, having beaten uh, Samir O'Brien's in their semi final. And then we look at St. Joseph's, who rebounded, I suppose, from that defeat to Broadford uh, by coming through two games, which have gone to extra time against both Tubber and the last day in their semi final. Uh, they've gone through 80 minutes on both occasions and uh, you think that uh, that'll stand to them in, in instead for today? Yeah, well look, looking at the Broadford Bridge game, that, that was a derby match, that was always going to be tied to Bridge are very strong, their second team is very strong as you said that went to penalties um, Killaloo and Broadford was also a derby game so that was, there was going to be nothing really in that, I know Broadford probably came through with maybe f I think it was four or five points in the end um, I know the last day Bearfield came through a serious, serious struggle against Scarif. We're probably lucky to get out of it, lucky to get out of jail, but they really pushed on an extra time. And against Tubber as well, they, they came through 80 minutes in that. And I think today that will stand to Bearfield. Um, they showed real grit and determination to come out of them two battles. And uh, I think that will definitely, de definitely held them in good state today, I think. Yeah, I suppose looking at the, at the semi-final, as you say, like Dorbeerfield at one stage were 10 points down against Scarroff and they managed to bring it back to a draw and in the end they won it by basically 10 points uh, after extra time in the end. So that shows mentality-wise uh, uh, a, a very strong, I suppose, united, uh, united group um, that's willing to go through anything to, to try and ensure that they get over the line. Yeah, definitely. Even looking at the programme here, like, like there's a lot of names gone from the Bearfield that, that you wouldn't really associate with, with the Bearfield team. There's a lot of new, new, new young lads on the team um, and that that really gave them confidence. Like I think there was a 21 point swing in, in that semi final. I think they were 10 down and they, and they, and they won by 11 in the end. So um, that showed real determination. That'll give them great confidence. And I suppose they, they'll be looking to the likes of Alan O'Neill today inside full forward to, to give them leadership. And, and Jay and Conroy in midfield. Um, that's going to be their focal point to, to work the ball to probably midfield and get it into nail inside inside direct. And that's where Broadford are really going to have to st st stump it out. Um, and they're going to have to really concentrate on Alan O'Neill, stopping him, getting the high ball in and, and, and winning ball inside. Yeah, and then we, we, we look, I suppose, at Broadford, as you say, and uh, I suppose any testament to any team is uh, is your your strength and your mentality, and they win four from four from that penalty shootout, uh, where the bridge went zero from four, which was the difference that yeah. when the pressure came on, they were able to, to stand up and deliver, and um, and, and that shows uh, huge signs for the for the individual players, I suppose, of Broadford in, yeah, in that situation. Definitely, like, Broadford have, had, have, or have been hurt a lot over the last few years. I know that I think they reached two finals, and they were probably, they reached the final in 15, they were beaten by Bearford, 16 and they're going to use that today as real motivation I know they might be down Angus O'Brien today who's a real leader on their team but um, they're going to look to the likes of Cahill and, and Craig Chaplin and Dear Maloney and there's a lot of talk about this Stephen McMahon um, I'm looking forward to seeing how, how, what way he can perform today because there, there's big talk about him and uh, looking forward to see what, what way he plays today Lovely. Well, earlier before we came on here, we spoke with uh, both managers, Sean McMahon of Dura Bearfield and uh, Tommy Howard of, uh, of Broadford and we're going to hear their views on the games here now manager of the St. Joseph's Dora Bearfield team Shawnee I suppose uh, the onus at the start of the year would have been to try and get back here to try and uh, I suppose secure senior status again for next year after the, the relegation of last year yeah Sean exactly like you know we were we'd have been very disappointed how we last year finished you know and uh, that was the key is, is to get back to today and then you know let's see how we go today like really obviously of course everyone's ambition is to go, go back up and that's we're certainly no different than that No and I suppose yourselves and Broadford played out a game earlier on in the year there was only a point in it so that just shows the tightness of it so you'd be expecting a good close battle where I suppose a bit of luck or a, a call here or there could be the difference in the end that's, Look that's exactly it there's nothing between ourselves and Broadford you know in fairness they are a very good team I think we, we're a very good team as well and you know um, it It'll, it'll go down to the wire there's no doubt about it and maybe who gets a bit of a break on the day you know and, but I suppose we want to put ourselves in a position to be there thereabouts at the end of it by playing well and performing as, as well as we can and I think if we do that we'll be in the right, right chance 
and throughout the year I suppose you must be very happy with the I suppose attitude of the boys in that you've had to come through two extra two periods of extra time in both the quarter final and semi final to get here I suppose the semi final especially coming back from nearly 10 points down yeah. in the end to win it after extra time and I suppose that re- resilience and character is something that you'd be looking to shine through yeah like we'd be, we've been delighted with the lads you know uh, they've shown brilliant character all year like it wasn't easy to come back after being relegated that's a bit of a downer in itself um, but then as the year's gone on and we've had a few hiccups along the way with fellas being injured and fellas away you know um, but we just got on with it the lads have just got on with it and I think that's shown true in particular in the last couple of matches where you know even the Bradford game as well like we'd, we'd have sent off after a minute of the second half and you know we were in the game right to the end and but they battled brilliantly like and we couldn't be proud of them or happy with how they're going and you know I suppose what at the end of the day you just want to hope that we can perform to the best of our ability today and if it does and if it's good enough brilliant then Sean thanks very much for your time best of look today and uh, we might talk to you again afterwards thanks, thanks for I'm joined here now by Tom Howard, manager of the Broadford team. Uh, I suppose third year into your uh, managerial with, with Broadford, Tom, and uh, you'd be looking to hopefully uh, end it with an intermediate title at the end of today. I sure look, that's the objective. I mean, we've this is, as you say, third year. We have had three long years. We've worked very hard uh, all those three years. We came up short uh, the first two years last year after, a, I guess, a titanic battle with Fetal, who went on and won it out. So... You know, the objective at the start of the year was we'll give it one last go and we'll give it our best shot and we're here in the final and let's hope we can pull it off. And I suppose looking through at your results throughout the year, I suppose you, you obviously have, have defeated St. Joseph's by a point in, uh, in round two. Uh, you went to penalties in the quarter final and uh, you got over Smith O'Brien's by those few points in the semi final. So good competitive games that uh, hopefully have you prepared and battle hardened for, uh, for what lies ahead. Absolutely, there were three humdingers of games, I suppose, and in all three games at, at, at critical stages, we might have looked like we were going on our way out. Uh, we had to find a little bit and show a little bit of character. You know, lots of people will say we weren't playing particularly well and we didn't do ourselves justice, but you know, I mean, championship matches take on a life of their own. They're hard, they're tough, they're unpredictable. Um, I, what was, I suppose, satisfying and rewarding from a broader point of view is when we found ourselves in a bit of trouble, the lads found a little bit more and we were able to push on and just get the job done. And I suppose from today's point of view, that would be the message to, I suppose, push on, go as hard as you can and, and leave everything on the field. Absolutely. You know, finals are, are kind of a funny business. There's a little bit more tension and a little bit more talk about them and a little bit more hype. Um, and any manager who brings a team to a final, it's about just getting them to settle down, try and get them to play to the best of their ability and give give a, a decent performance and play as well as they can. And, you know, you'd always say to the fellas, look, if you do that and it's good enough, we win. And if it's if, if you do that and it's not good enough, then we'll accept our beat and we'll walk away. You're satisfied, job done. Tom, thanks very much for your time and we wish you the best of luck in the game Thank today. You Thank you. Welcome back here now to Clare GA TV and we're just going to have a look I suppose at the teams as both teams are out and warming up. Broadford first of all in goals is JC McMahon a full back line of Niall Maloney, Owen Donlan and Dara Whelan. A half back line of Paddy Donlan, Danny Redden and Podrick Taley. Taylor in the middle of the field you have the Chaplin brothers Darren and Cahill. A half forward line of Sean Phelan, Craig Chaplin and Dermot Maloney and inside in the full forward line you have Donny Whelan, Shane Taylor and Stefan McMahon. The Dora Bearfield team in goals is Paul Madden, a full back line of Adam Mungovan, Kevin Deline, and Thomas Heher, a half back line of Connor Kearns, Aaron Landy, and Darrell O'Shea. Midfield is Jarla Colleran and David Conroy. Half forward line Kieran Barron, Alan O'Neill, and Brian Gilfoyle. And inside in the full forward line, they have Connor Tierney, Connor Tierney, Cayman O'Connor, and Keelan Butler. So, I suppose looking at that, and we might have a look at midfield first of all, because looking at that Dora Bearfield midfield, uh, Jarla Colleran, I suppose, and David Conroy, both experienced uh, players at county level, um, have been, I suppose, around up to under 21. And uh, David obviously has been involved in the senior panel. And uh, the way they play, they're going to have an integral part into the uh, into the system that, that Dora Bearfield imply. Yeah, Bearfield will probably want to play a running game out of the fence and maybe hit the ball in directly to Alan O'Neill inside, but. Conroy and uh, Jared, they're very experienced, as you said. Conroy's great legs and can pick off scores from um, from midfield. Jared probably play a deeper role, sit back, maybe protect the the backs. But um, like the two Chaplin brothers there, Darren and, and um, Darren and Cahill, they're, they're well. Cahill's very experienced. Darren is probably has has more legs, but uh, he's a fine hurler too. Cahill's coming back from injury, but he he brings plenty of experience. So that's going to be a key battle today. And like whoever comes out there on top, will, will probably have a big bearing on today's game. I also reckon um, Bearfield will have to to shut down. The broad for full forward line, they seem very dangerous. Whelan, Taylor and Stefan McMahon. So that's going to be another key battle. Whether the, the big question is, can Bearfield, the Bearfield full back line hold that full forward line? 
and that's it and I suppose you're looking at, at the Bearfield full back line you're looking I suppose at that number three Kevin Deline years and years of uh, of service to Dora Bearfield and he'll be expected I suppose to ensure that uh, that that area of the field is shut out for Broadford there today Young Adam Mungaman's coming in there corner back um, like Deline Deline will have to keep the boys on the toes there but I'm sure he will Landy will probably drop back Jay will probably sit in front of Landy so they're going to have to cut out the ball coming into them um, but also on the other side Nate will probably go in full forward so they have a huge threat inside there. Like he, he's he's going he, he caused them total damage there in 2016 in the final when they played last. So they're going to have to watch him, and I'm sure Bradford are well aware of Neil's threat inside. And I suppose uh, we we're looking at, as you say, it is a repeat meeting of the 2016 final, the last time that Dora Bearfield were here. Um, Bradford at that time, uh, I suppose they they were defeated in back to back finals of 15 and 16, and they won't want their record today to be to be three and zero. No, that's that's for sure. Um, maybe the last day. The, the, la- the last time they were in the final Broadford took the right off the ball a bit they got involved in a few, a few side issues um, I think Tommy, Gr- Tommy Hurd will have them well grounded today they'll be well focused on the task in hand and um, Bearfield come out that day all, f- all guns firing so today is going to be a serious serious battle and it's a it won't be a pint or two either side wh- whichever team comes out on top and we're going to pause now for the national anthem So the scene is now set as we watch the teams get into their places. Uh, Paul Madden is making his way down to the town end goal, meaning that Dora Bearfield will be playing from the town end down to the Aldi end with Brawford in the opposite direction. And a number of changes that we see straight away. Cahill Chaplin going to wing back, uh, which means that number 21, Mark Maloney, actually is in at midfield for Brawford. Yeah, it's like we have to give um, a shout out too to the county board that the pitch is in a real uh, shape but look we'll, we'll see these changes it could change again in another five minutes Sean we just let the play develop and see what happens and the throw in is there and the game is on so uh, Broadford now coming down the wing side and number seven there Patrick Taylor trying to get it on it goes as far as Dermot Maloney Dermot Maloney plays it into the corner as far as Donny Whelan Donny Whelan gets out in front of his man holds possession tries to get around him has a look at the post takes the first shot of the game and it's over the bar so that's the first score of the intermediate final for Broadford one point to no score and a great start for Broadford yeah lovely score lovely ball in there by number 12 Maloney in, into Whelan out over um, outside him tuck it on the left great score by, great score by Whelan and uh, Dora Bearfield have gone with the short puck out now at the moment but Donny Whelan again has turned them over uh, the ball is broken there as far as Shane Taylor Shane Taylor has possession plays it back again as far as Whelan Whelan steadies himself takes his second shot of the afternoon and is that two in a row? yes it is it's two points now for Broadford great score again by Whelan they're going to have to mark him tight um, uh, Madden win short with that one maybe he'd be advised to, to go along on top of nail there for the first super goals just to get the team settled and here he lines up for, he, for the long one, as you say, but it's, it's down towards the stand-up terrace as we look. Cahill Chaplin breaks it down, and he breaks it down as far as Shane Taylor. Shane Taylor, without a hurley, passes it back to Cahill Chaplin. Cahill Chaplin surrounded there by Dora Bearfield, and they turned him over. And we're looking at Brian Gilfile now. Brian trying to get possession. The ball breaks into the middle of a ruck. So... Bearfield now back back in possession again, and Jarlett says they pick the ball up off the ground, and it's going to be a free into Broadford. We're waiting now just as they settle and Shane Taylor looks to be the player who's going to stand over this free. So Shane is steadying himself, bringing it out as far as the mark and he's going to put it in. But I suppose if they can land this one, it'll be a big start. Three points on the board right from the off. Yeah, Broadford are flying. Bearfield just need to get their hands on the ball. But Broadford, um, they could have asked for a better start, Sean. They're, they're, they've won every, every break in the middle there. So they're, they're going well at the moment, Sean. And I suppose a small bit of panic, if you like, from the Dora Bearfield. They lost possession of it. Uh, I suppose Impulse took over, touched the ball on the ground, and now they've given Shane Taylor this opportunity. So as Shane stands over the ball, we wait for him to 
wind lift and he strikes it from the halfway line the ball will carry the distance but it looks like it's going over to the keeper's left hand side and gone wide so at two points to no score we have a puck out coming now from Paul Madden so we're just watching now and as you uh, as you looked at Alan has gone inside full forward now for, for Bearfield so he's going to be I suppose the, the outlet that they're going to look to try and work the ball into Pat. Yeah definitely they need to get a ball in there um, fairly quick they're, they're two points to no score down but uh, just, just let him get on the ball and, and see what he can do inside so he'll cause danger if he gets the ball inside so here we line it up they're going short again as far as Kevin Deline so Kevin takes possession of the ball on his 21 and he delivers it down here as far as the far 65 underneath the ball is Podrick Taylor Podrick takes possession keeps his head up and delivers a cross field ball looking for Dory again so in the, that's four balls in a row into Donny Whelan's corner if we if we look at it from the start the ball breaks forward again and this time Tis Keen Barron was looking for possession but he's been turned over and brought for the breaking which Stefan McMahon delivering the ball in as far as Paul Madden takes it well inside Paul looking to break out is fouled and it's a free out now for Paul uh, good start from Paul good safe hands and uh, and a good interception yeah but Paul's a solid goal he's been he's plenty of experience and uh, just needs to needs to settle the team now but like it's noticeable there Sean that there is a slight breeze in favour of Bearfield the ball the last three that was hit and that ball that was hitting it kind of slightly was held up so um, Bearfield playing with a slight slight breeze so that free is taken down as far as Podrick Taylor standing on his own. He plays another crossfield ball again, looking for, for Donny in the corner now. Donny is keeping that ball held up, but he's been marshalled inside. So it looked like, yeah, a trip on the Dora Bearfield defender, and it'll be a free out for Dora Bearfield. Herhard's yeah. Herd, done well now the last two, like Whelan got the, the, the first two balls, but Herhard's won the last two balls that, that, that has come in there. So he's just kind of breaking even at, at the moment, inside her at the moment. And a long ball in looking for Conor Tierney, but that is cut out by Paddy Donlan and that line ball is going to take place now for, for Dora Bearfield. Uh, I suppose they'll be looking to try and settle here now, and try and uh, create an opportunity, if not get themselves on the board, just to, to get a footing in the game. Yeah, Conroy needs to keep this in play you now, maybe go, go short with it and, and maybe get a one-two or something, just, to, just even get a shot off and see, see if something works, but they need to, to get a foothold, as you said. So David Conroy now over on the far overside. He's just placing the ball down as we look. And he's going to attempt to put the ball in around to Alan O'Neill. So it just doesn't clear the, the bra for defenders. And coming out to collect it now is Paddy Donnellan. Paddy doesn't collect it first time. And he's under pressure back on his own line. And they're forced to 65. So Bearfield, Dora Bearfield will get their opportunity to get themselves on the board. As David Conroy jogs out from that sideline cut that he's just taken. And he'll stand over the 65 in a couple of seconds. Good play there by Tierney. Um, there's, it's great to see a corner forward uh, tackling like that and putting pressure on the defender to, to, to win himself a, a 65 for his team. So, Bearfield might get, get on the scoreboard here through, through Conway. And it won't be the easiest one of the day for him to start. Uh, it, it'll be out near the sideline, roughly, I suppose, about 10 yards in off that sideline. Um, but David, uh, well experienced free taker, he'll take his time over it and he'll be looking for a good connection anyway off the first one. Yeah, he's, he's a class act. He, he, should, he should put this away, um, just settle the team down, as I say, and. Uh, Get, get themselves off the board so as we wait now for David to lift and strike here it is it definitely has the distance it's curling in and it looks good we wait for the umpire to go for the white flag and that has St. Joseph's Dora Bearfield off the board so here comes the first puck out now for JC McMahon and Broadford. The hurley is up in the air meaning I'd say it's coming down long here he comes stand side long clearance down on top of Shane and Shane puts up the hand the ball breaks so here it comes back as, as, as far as Dermot Maloney. Dermot Maloney plays it in and tight. Cut out very well there by Aaron Lendy. Aaron Lendy has the ball. Looks up. A great block down inside now by, uh, by Niall Maloney. Niall is holding up the ball and a battle for possession inside by the half. Yeah, Brawford are coming out with it now at the moment. Plays it out uh, as far as Craig Chaplin. Craig Chaplin has it. Turns, strikes at the post and waiting for the umpire's call. It's gone to the wide. Just at the near post, wide, a wide ball. But a lot of pressure there put on by Brawford. A good turnover and, and an opportunity created. Yeah, the Brawford has set the tone. Like that's, that's serious play by um, Maloney there who came in. Who, who came in from the outset. Um, great block down. And you see again Brawford, Brawford after turning it over there again. So they look really up for the battle today. And now Dermot Maloney looking to get it and uh, uh, Jarlett uh, here has blown his whistle. He's blown for a free on Dermot Maloney and uh, Broadford will have another opportunity to put themselves uh, further ahead. So with six, just under seven minutes gone, uh, two points to one and uh, it'll be a free in for, for Broadford. Yeah, Broadford seem to be really focused. They're all talking to each other. They're all getting on to each other. They're really up for this match. So Bearfield better, better get into the game soon, sooner rather than later. 
So another opportunity again for Shane Taylor to stand over his free, uh, just about five yards or so, if even in off the sideline here at the stand side. Uh, Shane lines himself up, gets himself into position now, and we'll just wait for the strike. A good lift, not a clear strike, but has it the distance? It has just gone over the bar, and that puts Broadford into a three points to one lead. As a fast puck out comes from Paul Madden, looking down the far side, up goes Cahill Chaplin again. Cahill breaks it down, and Broadford coming in an early attack. Uh, early delivery there now from Mark Maloney. Mark puts it in, and N Niall Maloney is trying to hold it inside. But Kevin Deline, the experience of Kevin, just keeping him out, keeping the ball at the, the front foot side of him, making sure he has the opportunity. And now Kevin has that ball and he gets his, his clearance in. But there's three Broadford lads waiting here in the middle of the field. It was a matter of which of them. And Dermot Maloney catches it. Dermot looks, has all the time in the world and strikes it over the bar for a four point to one lead. Yeah, four points to one, as I said, Broadford well up for But you can see they're half hour in and we're drawing right out the field for the Pagouts. They're winning every break. You could even see they're three or half hours nearly out, 50 yards from goal. Ball was hit out, simple score. Maloney won't miss them. Oh, and Paul Madden lines up his puck out now as we go and back down here now into the half forward line. So he's looking for O'Connor here now. Came and doesn't win it though, and the ball is delivered again. Nice and fast, early and low, and Stefan has it. Stefan McMahon in position. Stefan taking it on as Craig Chaplin was running off his outside, but Stefan has gone past him, and it, now Craig Chaplin has it. Craig looking in as he tries to work it in, trying to work that shot. Uh, half hooked as the ball goes over across. It breaks in behind Donny. Do Donny's looking to try and get possession at the moment, but. Uh, the Bearfield lads are holding him out the umpire waves it wide the ball has crossed the line and it's going to be a puck out now for Paul Madden yeah Chaplin got it on his weaker right side there uh, ball across probably going for a score but Heher did well again Heher's coming into the game slowly but surely um, the full back line there in Bearfield are doing, they're, they're holding up well for the amount of ball that's coming in to be fair and I suppose puck outs at the moment are uh, would be a concern to Dora Bearfield because yeah, they've gone short with a few of them but the few now they're going long again here now so we'll see looking for Kevin O'Connor again but it's gone over his head as David Connery tries and run on David gets a flick gets a shoulder and it's in the possession of Darren Chaplin Darren gives it back now as far as Paddy Donlan Paddy Donlan delivers it long but it's caught here now in front of us and Dora Bearfield coming on the attack again a good shot in he's going to hold up in front of O'Neill Allen puts up the paw and he catches it Is he get an opportunity ball falls out of his hand kicked by Paddy Donlan and it's going to go out for a 65 yeah that's that's the threat there um, Kearns did well great ball in you can see they were going direct into nail three lads around him threw up the ball to kind of take a touch and fell out of his hands but the danger is there if they, they have to get that ball into nail so we're waiting now as, as the ball comes out and uh, as we say if we just go back I suppose to those puck outs again and it was another one maybe you could say may, it might have half worked out for them this time but yeah. they are struggling under their own puck outs at the moment yeah, Pat. Maybe half into a free there but um, they are definitely struggling as I said Broford are getting to the they're getting three men on the puck outs they're getting to the breaks you can just see the real hunger I suppose that, that hurt of 15 and 16 is really is really shown and they're really up for this, this game today as I said Bear, if we need to get, get, to, get to the pitch of the game now in the next five minutes so David Conroy now standing out over the over his 65. Second one of the day for David. A good connection, straight and true over the black spot. And that has Dora Bearfield up to their second point. So as we now approach 10 and a half minutes played, it's four points to two in favour of Broadford and a puck out from JC McMahon to come. Again, the hurley goes up, which indicates for us he's going long. No, he hasn't. He's gone over to the far over corner. <laughs> He caught us out that time, Pat. So as Broffer break now with uh, Dara Whelan, Dara is trying to break out on top. Jarlett Donlan, the referee, has indicated he was tripped and it's going to be a free out. So Probably was a free on that occasion. Um, Chaplin, Cahill now, will will could about just about have the distance here now. He's, he's a great striker for a ball. Um, or he might opt to go, to go into Whelan, but I, he's probably going to go short, I'd say. A long crossfield ball again, which has been the, the target of him all the time. And great catch there by Sean Phelan. Quick turn and shot. Looks at the umpires. They go for the white flag. And that's another great score from play for Broford. Great score, yeah. That's probably something they've worked on in training. Great score, but, or great catch by Whelan. Turned over the bar and their forwards look very, very sharp at the moment, Sean. And Dora Bearfield are going short again towards Kevin Deleen. Kevin controls it and delivers it down here towards midfield again. Up goes Podrick Taylor. The ball breaks down in front of him, but Podrick's still trying to control it. In, in it goes into the middle of a ruck, and now we have Craig Chaplin inside in the middle of it. Uh, and worked out now as far as Sean Field. Sean Field delivered that crossfield ball again, but Kevin Deleen had it right. Kevin has the ball, and then dropped down in front of him, caught inside, and he's got a free out now for Kevin and uh, a good recovery from Kevin uh, based on the situation he was in. Yeah, showed all his experience there. Kevin's a good solid player um, showed all his experience was out in front won the ball won a free and relieved the pressure and Madden should go direct with this now long ball in 
So here comes Paul standing over that free and he delivers it long as you say looking for Alan O'Neill but it mightn't quite reach him. Ball is breaking down in front of Conor Tierney and there goes Kyle Javin and he pulls on it out as far as Podrick Taylor. Podrick breaking out with the ball as he looks ahead. Looked for that crossfield ball into the corner again but this time it's Conor Kearns. Kearns looks out and he plays the, the short pass out as far as Aaron Lendy. Aaron Lendy plays it up but at the moment there's three Broadford players here waiting for it. It was only a matter of who and Podrick Taylor looks up, tries to pick out the number 12 here which is Dermot Maloney. Dermot miscontrolled it. Ball back to Aaron Lendy and they break forward again. So Aaron now looking for Alan O'Neill inside in the square. A good high delivery up goes at the hand of Ellen it breaks down Connor Tierney and Ellen is there but it's actually the full back one Donlan that's bringing it out Owen delivers it there now in front of Shane Taylor Shane Taylor has possession gets his hand pass off as far as Darren Chaplin Darren delivers it in down the centre and in it goes as far as Kevin Deline Kevin gets out first good control takes the tackle he's looking for that sharp out ball again plays the ball nicely over as far as uh, uh, as far as Dara O'Shea Dara delivers a cross field ball Jarlett saw a bit of uh, playing the hurley before the ball arrived and he's awarded that free out to Broadford. Yeah, harsh enough to six and one half dozen the other Sean, but uh, you could see there um, Broadford had a man behind the ball there so they're kind of playing with a sweeper, they're playing very defensive and it's going to be hard t- to bypass that man like, but the Broadford are playing very well at the moment, Barefoot are kind of living off scraps but they're slowly or surely getting into the game. The last place. Cahill Chaplin standing over this free now and he delivers it into the far over corner looking for Donny Whelan again uh, Donny who is on the board straight from the off with the first two chances and uh, Donny has the ball now inside in the corner can he get it into the hand Kevin Deline gets between him and the goals it looks like it's gone out but is it a 65 or a wide the umpire says it's a 65 and it's going to be another opportunity for Broadford to build their lead yeah good good play by Whelan there great pressure applied um uh, Deline took the ball out over over the 65 so this, this is a scoring opportunity again for uh, for Taylor so he probably will nail, will nail this Very obvious I, I suppose Pell looking at Broford at the moment they're looking to get that ball in early they're looking for that crossfield ball and they're hoping that the, the speed of their two corner forwards inside are, are going to do a lot of damage uh, in, in terms of the scoreboard Yeah definitely they're out in the middle third they're, they're, they're half hour line they're withdrawing way out the field they're trying to drag the barefield half back line out get the ball into the likes of Taylor and, and uh, Whelan inside leave plenty of space but uh, you can see their, their game plan is uh, f- fairly evident so we've Shane Taylor now standing over the 65, over on the stand-up side of the, of the pitch as we look out from the from the from the seated area. It looks to be on target. It has all the distance. Umpire goes for the flag, and that's another one for Broadford. So now we're at six points to two with just 14 and a half minutes played. A great start, and, and Broadford will be really happy to have themselves settled into this game. Yeah, the shooting is is very accurate. I think they've only had one or two wide, so that's that's kind of strange for this for for a game of this um, magnitude. So that they're they're going well at the moment anyway. Both sets forwards. Oh, Craig Chaplin with a shot off there under pressure uh, the ball travels the distance but it's going to go to the far side of the post and it's going to go wide uh, two or three snapshots there from Craig and I suppose all, all have ended in the one result which is narrowly wide uh, but giving possession back to Dorbarfield yeah I mean, Craig, Craig is a good hurler maybe he'd, he'd be better off advised to, to give the ball into Wheel and, and the lads inside and they can do the damage so he's on, he's on the ball again now so he's, he'd probably give the shot he does yeah, a short ball there now as far as Mark Maloney. Mark has it. He's blocked down well there by Brian Gilfoyle. Pressure is in. Uh, both, both Mark and Brian staying over the ball. Bit of pushing and shoving, but the referee is going to get control here and we're going to have a throw in to restart the game. Now, So we're just waiting now as Jarlick gets the ball. He's calling his two there in front. And Darrow O'Shea is one of them. And Dara is standing out over the ball now. And the ball will break out behind him. Breaks here as far as Connor. Connor has it. Throws the hands up in the air, trying to motivate his team and get Dora Bearfield taking over. Yeah, he kind of bought that free. He put the head down, but he, that was cute play. And, the, and Conrad could could slot this over. But Bearfield need to keep, need to get all these um, all these frees to stay in this game. So another opportunity now for, for David Conroy to get himself on the scoreboard as he is a free now just about five yards behind the midfield line and about ten yards in from the sideline. David stands over it, weighs it up, he bends, lifts, strikes. He t- will have the distance, I would say, and it's on target. Another point for David Conroy, another time for Dora Bearfield, and that just keeps them ticking over six points to three and only three points in the game. Yeah, Conroy's Raiders definitely in from the freeze. Uh, need, needs to get into it from open play, but um, Bearfield, they're 6-3 down, but they haven't really started hurling yet. Gill is on the ball now, and this could be a scoring opportunity. That's great. It's just wide. Just drifting, as you say, as we go, and coming to the near post as he struck it, and the ball has gone wide, which gives JC McMahon another opportunity to line up his puck out, and he's looking for options. 
Still waiting, and he's going to deliver that long ball now down the centre, down on top of what looks like Craig Chaplin should be underneath it. Craig goes up trying to pull on it, but a great catch there from Dora Bearfield. The, they're breaking forward all the time. Ball is turned over well, and Dara O'Shea tries to get over it. Dara has the ball, but Jarrett Donnan has pulled for a third man tackle as the ball was broken away, and another opportunity gifted to, to Broadford to get back into a four point lead. Yeah, a bit sluggish there from the Bearfield lads, um, just like handing these soft freeze, but. Um Broadford will take that all day long. So Shane Taylor takes the ball again and settles himself up just outside the 65 metre line. Fairly central for him and a, a very good opportunity again for, for Shane to extend the Broadford lead here. As we say, with just uh, 17 and a half minutes gone, six points to three is the score. And Shane now is lining himself up and getting ready to hopefully, in his mind, extend that back out to seven points to three. Yeah, um, he's, he's going with him so far. Good striker hitting him nice and low and throw on through and that's a great score. So that has brought her now out in, into a seven point to three lead as we wait for Paul Madden. Now Paul is looking for that for his options in the puck out. He's going along with this one. Down the stand up side as he, he looks, looking for the Kevin O'Connor again. Ball breaks down and in goes three, four players, but it's uh, Niall Maloney who's coming out with the ball. He's been fouled again and we have uh, another free, uh, I suppose. Uh, a lot of frees, if you like, if you like, being conceded by Bidou Rarefield at the moment, which is gifting uh, possession, and as well as that, it's gifting uh, Broadford an opportunity to play the game on their terms. Yeah, Broadford are just being cuter, like they're like they're, you could say they're they're soft frees, but like in fairness to Broadford, they're getting them so in fair play to them, but they're they're just slightly cuter at this, this point in time. Bearford need to get into this game, as I say, and or else it's going to run away from it. Seven seven three at the moment, Sean, um, and this could be another score from uh, from Taylor. So just outside his own 65 now as he looks at it, Shane is lining it up and he's going to strike it roughly on the, on the 65 of their own. It's probably not going to have the legs and it's going to break deep down inside. Kevin Deleen puts up the hand, the ball breaks down to Darrow O'Shea. Darrow O'Shea has the ball as he works it out now. Adam Anningen, Adam, and it's going to be a free out for that tackle and that will give uh, Bearfield a, a bit of relief and, and time to reset and get going again. Yeah, they just need to settle down, get their hands on the ball. Um... As I said, they, they might need to get a score to know just just to keep in touch with Broadford. Broadford are hurling very well at the moment. So Paul Madden now is going to take this free just on his own 21. Paul lifts and strikes and he sends it down. Down on top of the D, looking for Alan O'Neill to come out in front. Alan breaks the ball, but it just goes past David Conroy as Darren Chaplin picks it up and Darren sends it down to his Donny Whelan. Donny Whelan, he's out Fox there, 3-1, to one, but Donny still has the ball. Has it in his hand now as he goes looking for that pass. Look at a good crossfield ball. He's looking for Shane Taylor, but it's cut out now by the airfield. And forward we come with... Adam Man or Keelan, Keelan Butler, sorry, we're breaking out with it. The long strike, but uh, too long, and the ball travels wide. Yeah, a bit naive there, uh, young fella Butler, but um, probably should have given the ball in. But um, look, he, he learned from that. Maybe the next ball might, might go in. Landy's on it now. They need Landy in the game. He had a super game three years ago when they won it, so he's starting to hurl a few balls now, so he, he's a big player for Bearfield. So Darrow O'Shea passes it over now as far as Cameron O'Connor. Cameron O'Connor delivers it in on top of Alan O'Neill. Alan puts up the hand, but the ball breaks down behind. Paddy Donlan is there waiting. Paddy has possession. He steadies himself and looks for his captain, Cahill Chaplin. Cahill doesn't control the ball, and Keane Barron is there now in front. Keane has the ball. He slips it off, and in goes Gilfoyle. Brian Gilfoyle with the ball. He's looking for the greener. He's taken down, and a free in. I suppose a latched his tackle. Their goal opportunity was there, yeah. and uh, Paddy Donlan felt he had no option but to, to take down Brian Gilfoyle in the way. Yeah, I think Gilfoyle was actually falling before he got fouled but uh, did well to work the free maybe if he sat on his feet he could, he could have got the pass off but uh, it was a great ball uh, great vision by, by the wing forward to give him the pass and, and Gillard, Gillard did well to go through but they should get a score from this now but there was a half a goal opportunity there and again it is obvious with, with Allen inside in the square that that is their, their first case of looking for it trying to break it the, the earlier ball that he broke unfortunately David Conroy had just outran it um, but there will be opportunities in there if they continue delivering the ball yeah they're, they're going for that direct route but like it's every time they're brought in early getting a 2-on-1 situation so maybe they might be advised maybe to pick off the corner forward who's probably loose if the, if the corner back is going back on top of Allen as well helping the full back so maybe like they don't have to go direct every time they can maybe mix it up a bit so free in now, just on the 21 meter line for David Conroy. David standing over it, settles himself, taps the ball over the bar, and here we go now with 21 and a half minutes played, seven points to four, and JC McMahon has a ball in his hand and he's looking for his options. So JC will take his time, he'll steady himself, and he's going to go short again. Short ball out, just passing the 21 meter line as Broford looked to attack, but Brian Gilfile holds him up. Brian is tackling hard there on uh, Dara Wheel, and Dara doesn't get the ball clear, and it's going to be a line ball, a line ball for Broford. 
Brawford. Great work, though, there from Brian Gilfile in terms of keeping the ball and keeping the pressure on the Brawford defence. Yeah, I actually thought the Brawford defender nearly half all the ball. He took a touch. I didn't look like he took a touch in the hurley, but um, that, that was very good play by Gilfile. And the forwards on both sides, in fairness, they're working very hard, and that's great to see when, when defenders are coming out, they're, they're hooking and blocking. The work rest seems to be up on both sides in the forwards. So Podrick Taylor now is placing the ball and Podrick is going to take that puck out. Or sorry, take that line cut. So he doesn't get under it and David Conroy has it. David is dangerous from this area now. He's just on the 65 metre line, dropping it in as far as Conor Tierney. Conor gets a little nudge in the back, a bit of smart play there from uh, from Paddy Donlan who's marking him and the ball is worked back out there now to Paddy and Paddy comes down the field. He's waiting for options. Delivers a long ball down and Darren Chaplin came running for it but the ball has broken behind to Conor Kearns. Conor has the ball, steadies himself and plays a crossfield ball to looking for Alan O'Neill. Alan shows and catches, first clean catch but the strike isn't there the ball goes in as far as JC McMahon and he has time to steady himself and works that ball all the way out as far as Dermot Maloney and Dermot gives a long clearance down as far as the corner but uh, Aaron is probably going to win this race he does indeed Aaron has the ball Aaron Landy in position steadies himself and drills a high ball again looking for Alan O'Neill but Alan is out of position Brian Gilfile is waiting down below for it to break the ball is with Paddy Donlan Paddy has it he's been under fierce pressure from Conor Tierney but got the ball out as far as the 21 yard line and all of a sudden it's been turned over now and the ball is inside in the middle of a ruck who's going to win that is going to be big ten and Brawford have it the ball isn't clear though and Bearfield still have possession Bearfield trying to gear it they've three now on their feet hoping to get over Brian Gilfile the main man inside there breaks out as far as Conroy again Conroy has it steadies himself gets his shot off it's going to land probably just gone to the far side of the post and gone wide but Super pressure again, I suppose, yeah. from the Bearfield forward, ensuring that uh, the ball isn't coming down fast on top of yeah, the backs. No, Sean, we were real contest now. Bearfield after starting hurling the last four or five minutes, and it's it's very even. Oh, I know Broadford are seven four ahead, but it's it's very even, very even keel now at the moment. Shane Taylor then delivers a crossfield ball and Aaron Landy gets on position again. Aaron is starting to mop up a lot of position there in the last few minutes. Brian Gilfile breaks it down, but he only breaks it down as far as Craig Chaplin. Craig has it, hand is in the air, and it's going to be a free in, and Jarrett Donlan is calling Keane Barrow over for... Uh, I suppose an accidental tap uh, when the ball when Craig was, was breaking past him but he looks like he's going to go into the book now yeah that was a lazy lazy challenge but it was a free all day long um, Broadford in fairness they're being cute they're playing for the frees and they'll take them all day long Sean but Bearford needs to be more disciplined giving away them, them silly frees at, at, at their own side their, their final score is very hard to come by Bearf or Broadford seem to be getting the scores a lot easier so Shane Taylor now is standing over his next free and uh, Keane Barrow was just ticked that time. There was no yellow card. So he's uh, on a warning now for the, for the rest of the game. And Shane steadies himself up, standing on his own 65 as he looks at it. He's going to take his time. Will he have the range this time? Last one just dropped short. This one looks like it's going to drop again. In it goes. Hands go up and the ball travels all the way through and goes wide. Yeah, that, that could have went anywhere, Sean. Um, could have went all the way to the net, but you could see there the, the breeze did ho hold it up a small bit. There is a slight breeze, but um, which Bearford are slightly playing with, so we'll see what we just... Yeah, so Keen Barrow has it now Keen, Keen breaks it down in front of him and he goes to take it on Broadford emerging around him four from there but he manages to get it out as far as David Conroy David gets the ball up in the air but doesn't get possession and all of a sudden they're swarmed again and a lot of bodies over the ball and this looks like it's going to be another throw-in it's been a facet of the game so far we've we've had four or five throw-ins and every time that ball breaks that there, there's a huddle of people around it Yeah and Broadford seems to be coming out with the ball a lot in the breaks but um, Gerald's kind of He's blowing the whistle a lot at the moment, but um, I suppose they are stopped you, so he has to go by the rule book. And here we go again, throwing his made in it. It is one now by, by Bearfield as they pass it back out. Dar O'Shea has possession. Again, a high delivery in as far as Alan O'Neill. He tries to get his hand up. Ball breaks down again as far as Paddy Donlan. Paddy works it out as far as Owen Donlan. Owen has it now. Owen delivers that long ball down into the corner looking for Donny Whelan again. Donny comes and shows with Thomas Taylor on his back. Thomas makes sure the ball stays in play and it's Bearfield who are coming out with possession. A lot of pressure on, but a long delivery looking for O'Neill again inside in the square. Alan comes and shows holds off uh, Owen Donlan that time he's still got possession he's going to need support three on him gets the ball around and it's Dara O'Shea again and I think Dara is after being tripped and we're going to have a free in great work there from Alan O'Neill in terms of holding up the ball waiting for the right man and then recycling the ball back out yeah but I think it all started back here with Lendy he's probably cleared the last four or five balls he's really getting on top he's a fine hurler great striker as I said earlier on, they're kind of doubling up on Nail, so there should be a man free there should be, should be an option there to go short but Nail is dangerous inside 
Yeah, and as you say, as we look at it at the moment, it's uh, kind of an hourglass, if you want to put it like that, is, is the way Broughford are two on the wings, one inside in between the full forward line and half forward line, and then we have the two inside in the, in the full forward line. So they are only playing with the five forwards, which is creating that space, which Aaron is starting to fill now and pick up the ball. Yeah, but Broughford like to play with the five forwards. They have awful pace inside in the full forward line, so they can get away with that. And they'll, they'll try to exploit the, the Bearfield full back line. But um, look, Bearfield are back in it. 7-5 now so they'll, they'll be fairly happy enough they're, they're keeping the scoreboard ticking over they're only 2 points on and they haven't really started playing yet so Paddy Donlin takes the short pocket again and Paddy tries to break out himself out he comes he's been followed by O'Neill and O'Neill puts pressure on him and it's a free in one now for a, again that short puck out carried it too far ran into Alan O'Neill and just couldn't get the ball away yeah a lot of the traditionalists don't like the short puck out but um, great work again by the Bearfield forwards and Conroy should slot this over point in the Sean um, and Bearfield as I said will be very happy yeah, so as you say, we're here now, seven points to five. We've 27 and a half minutes played. Gives David Conroy an opportunity to just put one point in the game and you'll be feeling that uh, Broughford, with all the hurling they've done in the first half, would really have been happier to be a few more points in. Yeah, they probably should be four or five ahead, to be honest, but uh, Conroy's keeping the scoreboard ticking over. They started playing on the last six or seven minutes and, look, leading up to half time, scores, scores will be crucial now. Yeah, so we're seven points to six now at the moment with that three just gone over the bar from David Conroy. And here we, we started again with a puck out. The puck out comes down from JC McMahon. Down into the centre, and it's won there by Adam Munigan. Adam delivers it. Low in, O'Neill gets his hands to it again. Got out in front of his man, got the strike off. Is it going to hold on target? I think it is. And all of a sudden, we have a tight game. Yeah, great score by the big man. What a score. Um, seven points each, Sean, and Bearford will be delighted. Yeah, as the replay is shown there, a lovely ball, great hands from, from Alan O'Neill. Got his turn, got his strike off. First strike of the day, he got off and straight in over the bar, but Bearfield, after conceding a free now straight away, and that's going to give an opportunity to Shane Taylor to put Brawford back into the lead. Yeah, another stupid free, but um, look, as I said, Bearfield will take it now. Bear, probably will score this, probably, probably will be 8 7. Bearfield will be happy going into half time. As you said, the first 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, Brawford were all over him, but Bearfield will be happy going into half time if, if they concede this only a point on. So over on the stand-up side of the field as we look over now, Shane Taylor steadies himself just in off the sideline. Uh, difficult enough angle, but he is roughly, I suppose, about 45 yards, 45 to 50 yards out, which will give him the distance to hopefully uh, complete the, the strike straight over the bar as we wait and we look, and the ball is travelling. It looks like it has gone to the near post and it's gone wide. Yeah, look... I suppose a poor enough miss he's, be, he's been nailing them all day he's a nice striker but that's just it's pressure but a, a poor puck out there my Madden and they have the possession back again and Taylor could get this ball and catch it yeah Sean Phelan intercepts it he got it in now as far as Taylor Taylor has it a block down there on his strike and the ball breaks and in it goes he could have been left behind by Bearfield and all of a sudden an attempted trip that was just got away with by Brawford and the ball is relieved and cleared back down here as far as midfield great catch there by Dermot Maloney Dermot turns he strikes and the ball is back in but again that extra man that Bearfield have at the back is starting to soak up possession the whole time working the ball out again as far as their own 65 turn and deliver but no one there except for Cahill Chaplin Cahill catters it and a long relief and clearance but didn't realise his man was on the ground great run out actually by Doney Doney's after appearing from nowhere he he had his strike, got it off, started the half with a point. Is he going to end it with another one? Yes, he is. A great score again by Dunhamill. Yeah, he's a class act. He's a he's a real natural corner forward. Lo lovely hands, lovely striker. Um, and that was a great score. Great ball up by Cahill. Uh, but it's very evident there that the ball came in and Cahill is wing back, but he's, he wasn't actually marking his man. He was watching, watching inside the full back line where the danger is. And now it's Bearfield's opportunity as they break with Conor Tierney. Conor gives the dummy hand pass, puts it back into his hand, but he's caught the ball three times. And it's going to be a free out now as we look with 30 and a half minutes played, eight points to seven. There's only one minute of additional time to be taken. A great opportunity, but I suppose Conor just lacked that little bit of concentration and caught the ball the third time. Yeah, but the, the danger is there, Sean. He, he's plenty of pace. Maybe he caught it, give the dummy hand pass. Probably should have flicked it off the stick, but I suppose it's easy talking up here. But um, did well to win it, and Broadford have the free out now, and they'll be, they'll be relieved. So as we head now till half time and Gerald uh, Donlin, the referee, is just going in to talk to his umpires. A small bit of pushing and shoving uh, after that ball, nothing too serious. And uh, we're just waiting now to Connor Tierney is still down, I suppose, getting attention. And uh, he, he Gerald just wants to make sure that there, were, there was nothing untoward in that in the incident, and we should be restarting again with a free out for JC McMahon. Yeah, I think they call it handbag, Sean. Um, there was nothing there, but uh, Bradford have the free now, so so um, they're going to relieve the pressure. 
Uh, Owen Donlan has actually been called across so the umpires must have spotted something Owen is going into the book here which is a, a dangerous predicament for a man that's marking Alan O'Neill and uh, is going to be contesting high balls all day yeah they, they, they could make a switch there um, but stu- stupid yellow card so so um, I think Tier- Tierney is going into the book as well or is it Ke- Keane Barron is going into the book as well so um, he'd be on a yellow as well so two, yellow so two yellow cards and are we going to begin now the question is with that free out or it is uh, free out still stands and JC McMahon places the ball down on the 21 metre line and he's looking for the fast option nothing available so he's going with a long strike down and Jarlot Donlan now has it, enough is enough for the first half and as we head in at the break it's 8 points to 7 in favour of Brawford a 1 point lead but I suppose Pat, as we said earlier uh, Given that they're only a point behind, Bearfield will probably be uh, satisfied with that with that score line uh, in terms of how the first half has gone. Definitely, definitely. Um, like they're big guns. Um, like Landy only started hurling the last ten minutes. Conroy's come into the bit. Nail. Um, they're big guns. Have only started playing, but look, brought for their point ahead. But I, th- I think Bearfield will be really, really satisfied with the way the first half with, with, with only being a point behind. Yeah, and uh, I suppose just looking back at, at the opportunities, there was there was a small few opportunities, especially in the from the Bearfield forwards' point of view for goals. We had the the one there at the end, Connor Tierney catching the ball three times. We had the one where Brian Gilla was breaking in and was taken down, and also I suppose with the the danger that is Allen inside that he's going to catch it. That they'll be hoping that one of them at least is going to come off in the second half. Yeah, well we see up here, Broford kind of playing the ball out to the corners, and Bearfield are going, to, going more direct, but they have had two or three goal chances as you said. So they're going to keep um, keep keep that ploy of hitting the ball in direct to nail. Um, trying to create a few, few goal chances but as I said they'll be really happy with, the, with only being a pint, pint behind at half time and I suppose one of the biggest messages now at half time for the Dora Bearfield's point of view will be uh, to have a look at that free count and to try and minimise it uh, to, to a certain degree for the second half because they are uh, given a lot of opportunities to Shane Taylor and in the form he's in today he's taken most of them yeah Conway's only got Conway scored he's two or three, three frees Madden's hit one or two at the back but uh, Broadford seems to be getting a lot of frees and Taylor I think has only missed one so he's on form he's on song today with, with the frees and Bearfield will need to look at that at half time and have a serious talk, talk with the lads inside the dressing room about the the, the concession of freeze and uh, I, I suppose that, that'll be it Like we'll be expecting an explosive start now in the next 10 minutes to the half um, but based on what we've seen um, from would you expect maybe Allen to come out a small bit he was named at, at centre forward I suppose from the out but they've used him primarily with the breeze inside that if the ball isn't travelling in there we'll probably see him at some stage appearing at, uh, at centre forward looking to, to get on the ball yeah maybe like, you can still play him inside but maybe he could come out to wing for a puck out or something and, and change it up a bit just, ju- just to win a few balls but um He's probably not in the game from from open play. Like they need to they need to get him in the game. As I said, they need to get him in the game. They need to get Jay in the game. They need to get Conrad in the game. Um, they they're their aces up the sleeve. Uh, thanks very much for that and uh, we'll rejoin you again for the second half but now here at the moment we're just being joined by uh, local journalist Seamus Hayes and Seamus uh, we were just talking to Pat there about the, the, the first half 8 points to 7 is the score uh, but in terms of possession I suppose uh, Bearfield much much the happier they're much the happier now because they were you know the, they were struggling in the first 20 minutes I thought Bradford were winning a lot of ball around the half back line but uh, they didn't uh, stretch their lead and they only got the first point from play there just before half time but uh, Bearfield are definitely happy to just be piled down at this stage. And uh, we, we just, uh, I suppose, looking at the chances created, even uh, there is an opportunity there for Bearfield, but uh, they're really looking at that route one ball in as far as Alan O'Neill at the moment. Yeah, they seem to be concentrating big time on that. And uh, Broadford seem to have an extra man back and they're picking up the brakes and clearing the danger. But you know, Alan got a point there before half time. Connor Tierney made a break there uh, and one of three could have got in. So it looks as if they're growing in confidence in Joseph's at this stage. And I think Broadford will be worried at halftime. And I suppose uh, the, the early explosive start that Broadford did make, you had the Donny Whelan points, and I know he finished the half again with another one. Um, but they, they, they started to rely, I suppose, on freeze to keep the ball sk- ticking over there kind of halfway through that, that first half period. They did, yeah. You know, you'd, you'd feel that with the start they got, and Donny Whelan got two great points at the very start, that they would have, you know, kind of uh, lifted their game more and gone for more scores. But they seem to kind of uh, maybe become a bit defensive at that stage, you know, instead of maybe pushing on when Josephs were trying to settle. Uh, but, you know, it, it's wide open. Uh, it isn't the greatest game of all times. I suppose there's a lot of tenseness there. Both sides uh, know that one slip could prove very costly, so a goal could prove very important in this game yet. No, and I suppose there are two teams who do know each other. They did play in the 2016 final, obviously, which Bearfield won on the day and played each other again in round two, which uh, Broadford actually came back from at the date, I suppose, and uh, and managed to win that one, but there was only a point in it again. So uh, it, 
as the as we go towards full time and as as teams start pushing, it might open up a small bit more. But it definitely is, I suppose. Uh, you can see Bear, uh, Broadford have five forwards. They're playing with the extra men at the back. They're trying to crowd it out. There's a lot of rooks, um, and it's not uh, allowing for, I suppose, a, a free flow in hurling final. Yeah, that's right. And Broadford, I suppose, a lot of people would feel Stephon McMahon is a key player up front for Broadford, but he hasn't really got into the game. I suppose he's been marked clo- uh, closely all the way through, and not enough ball is going down to his maybe uh, his area of the field yet. Donny Whelan are using him a lot on the other wing, but there seems like there's little in it, and they both will know that uh, one mistake could prove costly. And uh, you know, there's everything to play for. I think here it's very hard to call a winner at this stage, but. Joseph seem to have, have grown a bit in confidence as the game went on there and they'll be hoping that they can maintain that now in the second half. And I, I suppose we're just looking at that extra man at the back for Bearfield and he's made a big difference now. He's settled into the role, Aaron, and he's, he's starting to pick up an awful lot of the loose ball and the, deli- the crossfield deliveries, his positioning himself in the right posi- in the right places to get there ahead of the corner forwards, uh, both Doney and, and Dermot at times, or, or even Shane when he's in there. Um, but he's just cutting out that, that pass into the corners and he's, he's managing to, to curtail the, the attack from there. Yeah, that has been very noticeable in the last 10 minutes because Broadford, you know, if they get a ball around the half-back line, they're straight away drive it down to the corner but he has as you say won a lot of possession in the last 10 minutes and from that they, you know, they, they have come back into the game they've got the last 3 or 4 scores by the last point that Donny Whelan got there to give Bradford the edge by a point but uh, it has brought them well back into it and Alan O'Neill is coming into it a bit more maybe up front and Conor Tierney is beginning to come to life as well so uh, I suppose there'll be a lot of tactical talk in, the, in both dressing rooms at this stage because the first couple of minutes could uh, have a big bearing on this and whoever can edge may be ahead but you know it's tight and there's, a, there's little to separate them at this stage Yeah and, and it's noticeable I suppose with the ball that's gone into Allen that it is speed really that's around him like you have Brian Gilfoyle you have Conor Tierney uh, even outside you have David Conroy and then they're all making runs off in, in the hope that just one of those uh, break in the right position and all of a sudden they're straight through Yeah that's correct and, and, and you know the They've threatened that danger that maybe in the last five or ten minutes because, uh, you know, Alan Neal is strong. He has height advantage in there. You know, up to now, Bradford have dealt very capably with, with his threat. But, uh, you know, the Josephs are beginning to maybe spread the ball a small bit more to try and bring the other guys into it around him. And, um, you know, if they get, if they get a, a chance or two, they're well able to, to take a score. So uh, that could prove decisive. It's so hard to... To, to call it this, like Stephon McMahon has been a key player for Bradford all year. If he gets half a chance at the other end, he can do damage as well. But Jared Holland has been backing him for a good lot of the game there and he seems to have cut out that threat at the moment. And I suppose, uh, just Stephen, while, while we have you, we might just, uh, in, in what was, uh, we won't say a turbulent week for, for Clare GA, but definitely one which I suppose took some of the focus off the senior and intermediate finals. Um, I, I suppose the decision last uh, Wednesday night by the clubs uh, that the uh, position for senior manager obviously has gone back out it's open for another week and a half and um, and now we're in a situation where we won't know uh, candidates for, for nearly I suppose another 10 days or so Yeah we won't know now until, until Monday week like it's, I suppose it's Claire, Hur- Claire Hurling that's probably suffering uh, if, if there is uh, something uh, not going right at the moment because uh, you know they're waiting to see what's going to happen uh, you know will there be more candidates will the two candidates who had remained in the field up to last uh, early last week will they still stay in the race you know there's so many questions now there seems to be a view out there that Donald Maloney may allow his name back into the, the ring again uh, and maybe somebody new would come up with uh, you know at least the option is there now for anybody that's interested to put up their hand and say yes I want to be part of this and uh, you know and put together a backroom team that will hopefully bring Claire hurling back up the leather next year because maybe the county has slipped a small bit uh, in terms of ranking in the past year and uh, it, it needs to get get back up the other because the talent is there. There are loads of young players, very good players in the county and hopefully it will be sorted out soon. And I suppose that's going to be the biggest challenge is that whoever does come in, it's going to be about uniting, I suppose, the management, the players, the board, the supporters and trying to get everybody back on track, trying to get everybody working for the one thing and uh, trying to get Clare going forward again. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the question. You know, Clare have they've had good minor teams in the last couple of years. Maybe this year the under-20s didn't go that well. But there, there's a lot of very good young talent uh, around the county and uh, it's a matter of just getting them all on the same wavelength and all on the same... Uh, with the same uh, target going forward and getting down to uh, getting it down to brass tax I suppose if you like uh, and a good start in the league will be important this year for Clare you know just to try and get a bit of confidence going uh, and hopefully build up for the championship 
I suppose it's interesting also now that the minor uh, the minor hurling position uh, hasn't been filled and uh, Fergal Lynch has obviously indicated he's not going forward that uh, as far as I understand an email was sent to all clubs uh, yesterday as well asking them to nominate uh, their, if they have a chosen candidate to nominate them uh, in roughly the same time frame as the senior position. Yeah I suppose it, it seems to be a bit of a surprise that Fergal has opted out you know he had a very good year last year first year uh, involved and uh, you know the team had a good run uh, they, you know, they were knocked out I suppose eventually by the two teams that contested the All-Ireland final uh, and uh, you know, they, they had some great talent and maybe half of that squad is eligible for minor grade again this year so it's maybe a bit surprising that uh, Fergal lapped it out but you know, he's a busy man, he's a principal, national school uh, principal and it's very hard to have time for all these things but that's now open as well and uh, you know, that's an important age group, a very important age group because that's really the, 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 the stepping stone to the, the top grades so hopefully there'll be some good candidates in the field for that as well. Yeah, and I suppose that's uh, like the, the pressure now is on in a way to try and make sure that the right candidates are there because you're in a position, I suppose, where the minor championship and obviously the minor final is on here tomorrow uh, before the senior final and then the under-16 final is on the following week. So from a preparation point of view, the, the opportunity will be there from basically two to three weeks to start your trials and, and try and get things in place. That's correct, and the opportunity is there to see all this and you're into the season where college is hurling is uh, in full swing. St. Planners are playing the Hartley Cup this coming Wednesday and you know all the other players schools are playing in their grades as well so it does you know it's the time of the year to have your management in place for minor in particular to see all those players in competitive action lovely Seamus thanks very much for your time here and we're going to bring back in Pa now as uh, Dora Bearfield have uh, come back out onto the field and as we look around Pa I don't think we see uh, any changes at the moment uh, with regards to the Dora Bearfield team no um pretty much just the same as the finish in the first half for Bearfield um as I said they'll be happy they'll be happy enough to be only a point to point um but uh, they need to, they need to start hurling now, or or this game could slip away from them. Yeah, so uh, I suppose looking looking ahead to the next thirty minutes and what you expect, um, is it going to be a, a similar pattern where Broughford try and play to the corners and uh, you're you're we we'll see Allen is going back in full anyway to start. Yeah. You'll be expecting that uh, for Dor Bearfield it is going to be looking for him and getting the runners off him. Yeah, well uh, as I said earlier on um, before the match, I was looking forward to seeing how Stefan McMahon would would perform. He he was there. He he was their key man uh, all year, and Seamus referenced him there at half time as well. So, like they're going to want to get him and Wheel on the ball, as as Bearfield are going to want to get Tierney. Tierney's looking dangerous, and O'Neill on the ball and Gilfoyle. So, look, it's going to be it's got someone someone needs to stick their hand up, and uh, someone needs to stick their hand up and take this game by the scruff of the neck. Lovely, and just before we start the second half, just a shout out to a few of the people watching there: Flynn, Flynn Flynn, uh, Ronan Hickey, Joe McNamara, Owen Campbell, Mark O'Connor, uh, and Connell, who have all commented, I suppose, on our live chat. So second half is underway now, straight away, and Dermot Maloney trying to get out over that ball. Dermot is pushed over, and the ball begins uh, as a lot of the first half in a ruck, and all of a sudden it's Adam Monning, and Adam is breaking through. He's been followed by four, but there is green grass in front of him. Adam still going, carries the ball through. All of a sudden he's tripped, taken down, and a great start to the second half from Broadford and real intent shown there by Adam yeah he did well it was four lads hanging off him he just got the ball and went straight through drove through and look was lucky not to give up the pass but that's a great start from Bearfield and uh, Conroy should nail this free that's it and that would bring us back then on level terms obviously within a minute of the second half and uh, Jarlot is even having a, a small word with uh, with one of the, the Broadford defenders at the moment and uh, he asking him to step back let David take the free and you know, he's going to have a chat with David now as <laughs> well on top of it. So uh, David is delayed slightly from taking the free. But I suppose that, that is the response that Dora Bearfield wanted in the first half and really show that intent now for the next 30. Yeah, did it, uh, like, uh, that was actually a good free to give away because there was savage danger there. But um, Bearfield looked, they could come out of the traps early and looked a good start from the second half. So a sharp puck out as far as Dara Wheel and Dara's carrying it here. Goes into Brian Gilfoyle. Brian holds him up again out over the sideline. And another turnover achieved there by Brian Gilfoyle from a sharp puck out. Yeah, just looking down at Shawnee here, or Shawnee in the sideline here. They look animated, they look up for it. We didn't see any of that in the first half, but they've, they've really come out with all guns blazing and they need to. So David Conroy again is placing that ball down here now. Just, uh, I suppose, uh, uh, roughly about 35 metres or so out from the Broadford goal chips it in looking for gone past Allen the ball breaks there's an opportunity in there but inside and picked up uh, Jarlett says fair shoulder play on and the ball is tipped away by Cahill Chaplin Cahill has put it out in a 65 and an opportunity for Dora Bearfield to take the lead for the first time in the day yeah I actually thought that was a white ball I thought Tierney uh, actually flicked the ball out over the line but um, look the ball just the ball just hopped, hopped the wrong way um, Tierney, Tierney, Tierney did well but uh, they have 65 and a chance to go ahead for, for I think the first time of the game 
Yeah, a, a ball that just broke in. Darren Chaplin didn't control it properly, came out, as you said, to Conor Tierney. And as he was lifting it, Cahill just got that flick off, given the 65 to Dora Bearfield and David Conroy. And David is lining himself up now over that ball. And an opportunity, given the distance and where he is, we expect him to score. But it's drifted off to the far side and the ball has gone wide. And we say even Stevens here at eight points each, two and a half minutes played. JC looking for that long puck out, but uh, here he comes down the stand side. Long ball down as far as Shane Taylor. Is Shane coming out to contest? Up he goes. Ball breaks behind him though. And out it is. Ball is in the hands of, is it Dermot Maloney? And Dermot is the ball. No, sorry, it isn't Dermot Maloney. It was actually Mark. Mark Maloney had the ball, but out over the sideline, and it's going to be a sideline for Cayman O'Connor and for Dora Bearfield. Cayman is told to leave it, though, and uh, it's going to be Aaron, Aaron Landy coming out of centre back, and he's going to take the sideline cut from. Yeah, the Hurley went up from JC. That, that puck out is going to it's going to Taylor all day long, but Bearfield are doubling up on that, and uh, they have to be smart to that, that puck out. Great cut in there by Aaron Landy, looking for David Conroy. The ball breaks. David uh, Daroche, sorry, inside there as well. Uh, and in, in the middle of the ruck, here it comes, breaks out. Darren Chaplin doesn't get it. David Conroy has it though. David has it for Dora Bearfield. Opens up the play and gives it out as, as far as Keane. Keane is trying to break through his man, and that's Podrick Taylor following. The shot is off. Uh, half block, I suppose, from Kyle Chaplin there, and the ball lands inside with Owen Donlan. Owen plays it out the side, but. Uh, Keane Barron again has it. Keane is looking up. He recycles it, looking for Brian Gilfoyle. And Darrell Donlan says there was a foul or a pull on the jersey inside. And we're going to have a free in now for Bearfield again. Yeah, Barron did well initially. Um, took two men on, got half hooked, followed in the shot um, and, and did well to win the free. He, he's, got, he's motoring well now at the moment, Sean. So David Conroy will get another opportunity now to atone for that 65 with just about four minutes on the clock and uh, David is going to take his time now, steady himself and try and ensure that uh, this one goes straight between the posts. So here he goes, he lifts and he strikes. Umpires watch it all the way, run for the flag and that is nine points to eight and St. Joseph's Dora Bearfield take the lead as JC McMahon is told to hold up as there's a slight injury on the field but I suppose we've seen Dora Bearfield start now as Broadford started the first half in a real commanding fashion. Yeah, Broadford haven't got the ball in past I'd say the 65, Bearfield have been totally on top um, and they, they needed to come out and uh, make a statement to start the second half. So to, to Taylor it's a yeah, it's puck out is coming down. It's actually down here as far as Podrick Taylor this time. Podrick lets it in behind him, and Adam Mangan has it. Adam is blocked down by Niall Maloney. Niall can't get possession. In over it again. As we see the players swarming over that ball, trying to win the rook, and kicked out by Craig Chaplin. Back in as far as Dermot. Dermot plays it, but Connor Tierney is there. Connor plays it a, a good ball across the wing, and all of a sudden it's a keen Barron again. Keen having a big impression here in the second half. He's going taking on Dermot Maloney. Plays it back. Intercepted well by. Stefan McMahon Stefan has the ball he's going taking them on with the, the speed of what we've heard he drops the ball though on his run and all of a sudden uh, David Conroy has it David is breaking out David looking up ahead looking for that pass delivers a long ball in but it's not going to go beyond Paddy Donlan Paddy drops it down Alan O'Neill comes out to put pressure on him and uh, the two Donlans Paddy and Owen in over that ball and it's actually Darren Chaplin Darren brings it out Darren looking down the far on wing ball is in possession as Brawford go carrying it into traffic again turned over by Dara O'Shea Dara is looking now and it's been brought now by uh, by Jarlett Jarlett has it passes it off to Aaron Aaron puts it in but there's nobody inside in that corner and Owen Donlan's going to win that race Owen has time to steady himself and look gives the ball out and a long long clearance down as on, on top of Taylor Taylor puts up the hand the ball breaks and it's going to be Brawford and, or, sorry Bearfield are bringing it out through Connor Kearns Connor Kearns delivers it down and only Brian Gilfile shows in front Brian brings it to the ground uh, Cahill Chaplin there on top of him and the ball is going to end up with two or three around it probably another throw in Pat yeah, this, the quality of the second half is a lot better than what it was in the first half. It's really picked up. But I thought um, Bearfield would have, would have rather got the free there. Jarlick gave advantage. Uh, I think Jarlick Collar and Heather but, um, and gave uh, a wayward pass. But I think Broadford or Bearfield would have rather have taken the free. But this game is really opening up. So Jarlick now is calling for a blood sub replacement on the Broadford team. We're just waiting to see who comes down. But Dermot Maloney is the man who has to come off to be treated as Jarlick waits for, to throw in that ball. And just watching down here below us, there's no one out of the stand yet, Pat. But uh, Jarlick's going to give him the time to, to get that man on. Yeah, uh, Maloney's got on a few balls. He's trying to play these passes. He maybe held up the last ball for a bit too long. But uh, you see um, Kieran, Kieran O'Connell is coming on here now. He's plenty of experience. 
Craig Chaplin wins it but gets it turned over back over again now as far as Keane Martin Keane puts in a high ball in on top of O'Neill it's three on two inside or you have Tierney and O'Neill against the three Brawford boys the ball breaks out Darren Chaplin tries to get a flick on it out it comes and all of a sudden Brawford are on the way forward with Shane Taylor Shane has the ball steadies himself and delivers it long he was looking to have the distance but it's going, it is gone in a distance and it's gone over the bar and a good score there by Shane Taylor that was some score from his own 65 great score Sun and Madden's eyes you could see it was a dangerous ball he didn't, he didn't want to take the risk by bringing it down or catching it but um, that was a super super score by Taylor and that'll settle Brotford down now for the second half as that puck out again they're looking for Keane Keane Barron going up but the ball breaks down in front and it's Brotford who retrieved possession with the ball in their hand great pressure being put on by not one not two but three but Jarlett uh, alleges that uh, Craig Chaplin has been fouled and there's going to be a free in for, uh, for Shane Taylor now and another opportunity for him to keep the scoreboard ticking over yeah, uh, well won there by Craig, used all his experience, came out the field, won the break, but um, maybe the Bearfield half-back can be more advised maybe to push up, come out with their, come out with the Bradford half-hour line um, on, on the puck out. I know it, it's, it's, it's dodgy, but like they have to, have to be able to win them breaks, but Bradford seems to be winning all the breaks at the moment. So another opportunity now, as you say, for Shane Taylor, and uh, we're just looking at, at the makeup, I suppose, of the, the Bearfield forwards as we look, they have... Connor Tierney on the big square, they have Alan O'Neill on the small square and everybody else is on the 45 or even outside of creating that space as we talk. Shane Taylor takes his strike but it's going to go to the near side as he struck, ball is gone wide and an opportunity now for Paul Madden to set up another attack for Dora Bearfield. So Paul lines up this puck out, he's waiting for his runs, the ball goes down the middle, looking Look, he was looking for Darrow O'Shea but it's broke down Craig Chaplin again trying to get in there but the ball has broken and it's broken to Brian Gilfile. Brian Gilfile plays it in as far as Conor Tierney ball breaks behind to Darren Chaplin Darren Chaplin has it Darren steadies himself looks up he puts it back on the hurley Conor Tierney is chasing 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 and it's going to be a line ball now for Broadford yeah T- Tierney's work rate is great that's, that's great to see again great um, great disposition um, maybe Darren Chaplin was um, he t- took it on a bit too far but um but great work by Tierney. So it's going to be a line ball now for, for Cahill Chaplin. Cahill is going to stand over it. Usually you would see him go 30, 30, 40 yards. We'll see now where this one lands. It doesn't actually go past the first men. Commentators curse again and David Conroy has it. David's looking for that crossfield ball again. And over comes Keane. Keane looking to get on position. Craig Chaplin checking back. But it's shot a great block down there by Podrick Taylor. Podrick breaks it back and Craig Chaplin's going to be back in time. Get position and a long relieving clearance. Uh, down it comes now on top of Adam Adam puts up the hand but the ball breaks behind a high tackle round the neck and an easy decision Jarrell O'Colloran fouled and a free out for Bearfield yeah smiling smile on Jarrell's face there he knew what he was at um, was, was at the right place at the right time won the free and Landy's going to land this now in top of the square but um, Colloran did well there and now we see Cahill Rowine is entering the fair and Cahill is coming on actually for uh, for Brian Gilfile. Brian Gilfile is making way. Uh, Brian, who very industrious, I suppose, didn't maybe not quite on the scoreboard, but worked very hard while he was on. Yeah, quite by his own standards, um, but did well. As I said, the first half had a, had a half opportunity for a goal, but um, he's a good forward. And who's the new man on? Uh, Cahill Rowine has gone yeah. in, who was named to start in the yeah. corner. We, we, we'll see what he's to offer. He, 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 he could be a good young lad. So the ball breaks now and it's out as far as Mark Maloney. Mark has it in his possession. He was looking for, Ca- for Craig Chaplin. Craig has it in his hands but he's on his knees. Plays it back as far as Podrick Taylor. Podrick Taylor, long relieving clearance down. Up they go. Who's going to come down with it? It's Kevin Deline, the old head. Kevin looks up, delivers a great ball as far as Keane. Keane Barron has the possession. He goes with a long strike in looking for O'Neill. Uh, up goes the hand. He has it. O'Neill is on his way in. Can't get the strike off. And he still has it though. Owen Donlan trying to hold him out all the time Alan O'Neill still in possession but now he's dropped possession and the ball is on its way out through pa- pa- sorry through Paddy Donnellan Paddy Donnellan relieves his clearance down he's a good clearance out it comes good ball well recycled as far as Aaron Landy Aaron steadies himself on the halfway line he's taking that shot he strikes with conviction but not with the accuracy and the ball trails wide yeah he probably should have given the ball there short to to, to Cayman O'Connor the, the pass was on but um, he went for the, the glory shot but look um, he'll have another opportunity to, to rectify that. And a man just returned from injury last weekend, Jack Hennon, whose first game was uh, with the with the Bearfield footballers last weekend following a knee injury, enters the fray and it's Cameron O'Connor who's making way. Yeah, a lot of talk about the two Hennons, they're, they're serious prospects. I know the other, the other brother is out with a cruise sheet, but um, he could be a big player, player in this game yet when the game is in the balance. 
It's a down it goes now as far as uh, as far as Jarlett Jarlett has it he's looking for Hannon now straight away Hannon makes the run one handed pull but into the middle it goes and all of a sudden Rory O'Connor sorry not Rory O'Connor but Keane McQueen is on it Keane gives the ball in as far as uh, as far as Kevin Deline Kevin the full back holding out holding out keeping that ball trying to make sure he doesn't cross the line he's still in position and he gets the ball in uh, still in the corner and Kevin's still in position but can he get it clear a block on the shot but it's going to land here around the 45 and up goes Shane Taylor Shane doesn't catch it the ball breaks and all of a sudden there's another look over here at the far side of the field so very close to the sideline Jarlett blows it up and we're going to have another throw in I'd say yeah, Deline did well there, got a, got a good relieving clearance, but um, there's real tension in this game, there's nothing to separate the sides, and who's to say after 60 minutes this, this could end up in a draw, Sean? Yeah, and we're looking at uh, another man who has a lot of service given to Broadford at the moment, number 19, Podrick Hickey, and Podrick is, is warming up now at the moment, he's a helmet on, uh, tracks it off, and it looks like he may enter the fair in the next few minutes. Yeah, Hickey, Hickey means business there, he's doing a good warm-up, um, if that fella gets half a sniff of a shot, he, he'll take it, and they more than likely go over the bar from him so he'll probably go into the corner I'd say Sean yeah, so as we look at it now here with uh, just 13 minutes played we're at 9 points each and uh, in heading in now as we say towards that final 15 Shane Taylor waiting for the throw and pushing and shoving going there now between himself and Connor Kearns Jarlett tries to clear him he'd nearly be better off now Pat, if he just throw in the ball or we could have a bit more than handbags throw it in Jarlett quicker there'll be a row so here we are still waiting now and here's the ball in Shane Taylor pulls and the ball breaks up into the air and it's broken in for Craig Chaplin is pressure on but it's Bearfield who have it and it gone out over the sideline and it's going to be a line ball in for Broadford yeah Broadford be happy enough with that um, the ball seems to be over there for, for an age but uh, Broadford be happy to get their hands on the ball again and uh, they should keep this ball now keep this ball in play maybe look for a chart and uh, try to get a score on, on the board and uh, here he's coming now Podrick Hickey is entering the fray so we'll just wait for the fourth official Jim Hickey to put up the number and see who he's replacing but Podrick is definitely in as he makes his way across the, the 45 and in towards the square actually as, a, as he's heading at the moment he's pointing out but um, is it number 21 Mark Maloney I'd say is it Mark that's making way it is indeed there's Jim's board up now so Mark Maloney is making way and Podrick Hickey is in on the Broadford team Craig Chaplin stands over the line ball it has the height it has the distance but it doesn't have the accuracy and Paul Madden is going to get the opportunity to get a quick puck out here now down as far as Hannon so Hannon makes plenty of space in front of him and goes to attack it but it breaks behind to Podrick Taylor Podrick has it trying to stay in field as he has he gets turned over by David Conroy David gets hooked in turn and the ball is still in place still in and it's Carl Ruine just into the fray gets his shot off and you said we'd see what he has to offer and it's a point with his first yeah, touch He's proven, proven the selectors now. He, that, that's some score off the left. Uh, Conroy was half hooked, but the, the ball fell to the right man and a great score. They need to get more ball into that man. And while the replay was on, we just had a fast puck out as far as Craig Chaplin. Craig caught it, took a shot, and it's gone wide at the far side. So Paul Madden now is poking out again for Bearfield as we look. A good ball down here now, looking for Keane on the far side. Keane who had a very, very promising start there. And then David Conroy coming, and David plays it on in turn. Will it stay in field? It does indeed. No, Andy McMahon's flag on the far side has gone up, and it's going to be a line ball, and line ball out for Broadford. So... Cahill Chaplin is looking for the ball and Cahill is going to restart us with a line ball yeah look, look there was a bit of danger there for Bearfield um, he was true but like Berf or Broadford would be happy to, to get this line ball and Chaplin will open the shoulders here this could go 60 yards this will be, this'll be a relieving clearance again from Chaplin of course the last time we said that it didn't cross the first min so we'll have to wait and see if we put the curse on him again so here he goes Cahill does get under this one and it's up as far as the 45 nearly on the opposing side ball breaks down and Adam is there waiting for it but the ball is in possession of Broadford a quick flick off and all of a sudden we have Craig Craig gets turned over by Aaron Aaron as far as Darrow O'Shea Darrow O'Shea looks into the corner he's looking for Connor Tierney Connor shows for it he's gone to ground but holds the ball in front of him still in control of the pat of it and and he has it now, uses his feet to get out of trouble. And all of a sudden, Tierney, I'd say, has been hooked. Ball gone wide. And a, an opportunity, I suppose, lost for Bearfield. Yeah, it was 3-1 there in, in Broadford's favour. Uh, but maybe he should have come back, recycled the ball, give a wheel pass um, back to, to Barron. But uh, Tierney is dangerous inside. 
Sean feeling now on the ground. Sean is in over the ball. He hasn't it in his hand. A ball, it's been kicked back now as far as Podrick Taylor. Podrick has it. Breaking forward. He's three barefield men on him. Good hook from David Conroy. And all of a sudden, Darrow Shea gets that flick. Darrow Shea puts it as far as Adam Mungovan. Adam plays it on, and it's going to be Conroy again that's trying to get in on top of it. A good skirmish again, but the ball doesn't seem to be coming out, and we're going to have a, another throw in again, Pat. Yeah, the, the quality might be the highest, but geez, there's some battle out there. The hooking and blocking is, is just unreal. The scoring is low, but like there's so, some battle there, Sean. Craig now he goes for that throw in. Uh, Daroche loses the hurley, wins the ball, but Jarlett says he swapped hands when he kicked the ball. Uh, technical foul against him. Done well to gain possession, but unfortunately just swapped hands before kicking it, and it gives an opportunity now to Broadford to have a go at it. The two free takers are out, both Cahill Chaplin and Shane Taylor. So there's a discussion now as to which of them is going to hit it, and it looks like Taylor has won the battle, and Taylor is going to put the ball down. Yeah, um, silly free there, but I suppose he's probably getting tired now. The, the mind, um, it's probably mind over matter, but um, this is probably going to, this is going to be a, a tie game if he gets this. Yeah, um, he could slot this over, it'd be 10 all, and heading into the last 15 minutes, the game is still in the balance. So here we look now at Shane Taylor just down here in front of us, roughly halfway line, and he's uh, about 15, 10, 15, 10 metres or so, I suppose, 10, 12 metres in from the sideline. Bends, lifts and strikes. The ball will carry. Is it going to curl just inside? No, it's not coming back in. It's travelled to the far side of the post and gone wide and Paul Madden now has it in his hand. Paul gets a quick ball out as far as Connor Kearns. Connor has it and delivers a long ball down the wing. It bypasses the three Brawford men who were waiting and finds David Conroy. David is taking on Darren Chaplin now at the moment. He still has it, gets his strike off and the ball is going across goal. I'd say it stayed on track though. It's a good score, a great score from David Conroy. That is some score. The right man had it at the right time he opened up the legs that is uh, Madden did well to pick the shot goal great ball up the line and Conroy needs a, a big last 15 minutes of Bearfoot to win this game so it started again now with the puck out and the ball broken and Aaron Landy knows really again like he did in the first half starting to come into it around that, that middle period of the half and getting on a lot of position O'Neill out around the centre for the first time today gets it finds Adam Ung and Adam has it he's looking to recycle it three Brawford lads around him plays the ball back Jarlett says he threw the ball as opposed to hand past it and we're going to have a free out now and a little bit of pushing and shoving and uh, I suppose Bearfield would want to be careful not to, to get themselves involved in anything they're getting on top now on the, on the hurling side of it and the last thing they need is to be, to be drawn uh, into trouble there's no need um, Lendy uh, Aaron kind of got away with that but um, another um, soft free Sean will say that's, that's two in a row maybe Bearfield are getting a bit tired but um, Broadford will take that all day long but like Bearfield can't be giving, be giving Broadford an opportunity to come back into the game soft free and is there a book yeah there's a yellow card another yellow card for Bearfield so a yellow card being issued out now and uh, we have a change of free taker Padraig Hickey is it yeah. coming out and he's going to stand over this one Padraig who we said just introduced there a couple of minutes ago but well accustomed to taking frees in intermediate finals having been the free taker in about three of them previous so Padraig strikes it he has the distance but he hasn't the accuracy and another opportunity goes awry for Brawford yeah big call there by Hickey to, to, to go on the freeze. I know he's plenty of experience but um Look, that's a poor wide and they'll need to get all them because they don't seem to be getting shots from open play on target. Bearfield are well on top, but it's not showing on the scoreboard. They're only two points up, so Bearfield need to stamp their authority with scores on the board. Jack Hannon now had possession from that puck out and Jack is looking for O'Neill inside. Broken down by Donlan and the ball breaks out as far as Darren Chaplin. Darren is carrying it, being chased all the time by Conor Cahill Ruain. Cahill has turned it over, but Brawford back in possession again, having to work very hard. Cahill Chaplin gets it out as far as uh, Keane Crimmins. Keane looks in and he delivers a long ball in his top of Keen, uh, Kevin Deline, the full back, and Kevin has it in his hand, works it out as far as Aaron Lendy. And Larn opens the shoulders and a long clearance down top of Conor Tierney. Conor breaks it down and a battle on the ground but it's going to be brought out by Paddy Paddy Anlin has it Paddy looks out ahead of himself finds Craig Chaplin Craig goes on to his favourite side has the distance has the accuracy I think and a good score from Brawford yeah he staked the leg there that's a great score off the left um, and that'll rise Brawford up now he's trying to get it, trying to rally the troops 20 minutes gone a one point game it's 11 points to 10 Bearfield get us get it going quick and down on top of Tierney again now he's got inside of Donlan he's got inside will he get his shot off he did a goal great goal from Connor Tierney catch taken took him on and finished to the bottom corner yeah um, serious serious score by Tierney he's been threatening that all day long 
The last two balls have gone in. He's, your man has pulled hard on him, but he did well to get that goal, and that could be the game changer here, Sean. A great catch here in front of us now by Shane Taylor. Shane tried to rally the troops, get him back into it, gives it as far as Craig Chaplin. Got the point, Joe, there before, just before the goal. But this one is dropping, and it's dropping wide, and a puck out is coming, and as you say, a big game changer now. All of a sudden, a four-point lead for Josephs. Yeah, Craig got a, or was it Craig? Yeah, got a, got a great score with the last puck. Maybe he would have been advised there. That was a snapshot. Let the ball into Hickey, maybe. Give him a chance inside, but um, that was probably just a rush of blood to head. But before that, Tierney's goal was unbelievable, but he, he'd been threatening that the last two minutes. And it's my first time actually seeing him play, and he, he's a serious, serious forward and uh, one for the future. And someone that probably someone like Claire will be, Claire will be looking at. So we're just waiting now. We have a few injuries picked up here now, and uh, as we're looking at it, uh, Keen uh, Keen Barron down here in front of us is getting attention, and also Darren Chaplin is down on his knees in the in, in the Broadford half back line. So we're just waiting now to for these to, to pick up. But we're looking at the clock. Twenty two minutes played, one eleven to ten points. Uh, uh, as the game is going, it's. Bearfield that are getting stronger and unless Broadford can really break the momentum now it's it's looking like Bearfield are in a great position to win this it's looking like Bearfield are in a great position Sean but I think Broadford will need a goal to, to, to win this game now but um, Bearfield will probably just uh, tie it up at the back now you can see one or two of their players are, are sitting back in defence and keeping it tight at the back and maybe get one or two more scores on the board and that should see them through and now here we go a ball inside in the middle of a rock again Alan O'Neill is inside there his body in the middle of it and the ball is breaking out uh, Craig Chaplin goes after it but it breaks as far as Stefan McMahon Stefan has it he hits it in high ball in on top of the uh, Podrick Hickey Podrick just come on there on Kevin Deline two lads who know each other very well and Hickey strikes and over the bar it goes but it really was goal on his mind goal on his mind he got a goal here in 2003 against Fiekel probably one of the greatest goals ever scored in Cusick Park and He's seen that, he's seen the lights again, but that was a good score. There's still um, seven minutes of normal time, maybe two or three of injury time left, so there's plenty of time for, for Broadford. Um, but like they got a sniff of a goal there, but they might get another one or two goal chances before the game is over, so they, they should keep plugging away. And something that uh, Bearfield won't like now with Kevin Deline. Kevin is down on the ground in front of him. He seems to be nursing an knee injury. His uh, hands are going, he's yeah. gone, and they're going to have to replace, which well, I suppose at this stage in the game, the last thing you want is uh, your fullback, who has been commanding, oh, to be yeah. fair to him, uh, having to make way. Oh, yeah, he's been savage. He's been savage experience. Cool head back there. He's had a serious, serious game from Bearfield. And may maybe now Bearfield might be advised maybe to put. Put, bring O'Neill back centre back maybe or, or, or change it up like that they, they need experience at the back now just keep it tight for the last uh, 10 minutes or so that, that, that's left in this game and a change in the Broffer team while we're waiting Kieran O'Connell number 23 has come in and Sean Phelan is making way um, as we look down at, at Bearfield and it looks like Peter Collins who was named at number 2 in the programme but didn't start uh, as Adam Manning is starting ahead of him could be the person that's going to come in now for Kevin Deline yeah I think that they want uh, Young Hannon to go back full back I heard Shawnee there um, they're going to have to get their eyes and cues crossed here um, fairly lively because um, they don't want to concede any, any soft scores now. They just, just want to see out this game now. So here comes this, uh, and it's actually number 25. Uh, Fiona O'Brien is coming on, and as you say, he's coming on into the forward line, and they're they're moving, they're, they're, they're shuffling the deck to move backwards. So here comes the puck out from Paul Madden. Paul down his top of Aaron. Aaron trying to get it up into his hand, doesn't control it, kicks it back, and... Uh, Again, three touches, four touches there from Jarlett. Jarlett gets turned over, and all of a sudden, Broadford are on the tech. Craig Chaplin as far as Stefan. Stefan McMahon miscontrols it, and it's that man, Aaron, again. Aaron Landy with a good clearance out here on top of Cahill Rewine. Cahill gives a good pass, and Keane back 1 2 with, her, with, uh, with, with, with Cahill. Cahill looking to hold the ball, hold the ball, waiting for options. He just gets it into the corner then in the end. And it's uh, Dara Whelan who has it. Dara breaking out with that ball as he's trying to come out. And he half hits his clearance as far as Dara O'Shea. Dara settles himself and hits the ball into the corner looking for that man Tierney again. Tierney is showing in front of Paddy, but Paddy gives him a little shoulder. Uh, and as he went to rise it, Tierney touches the ball out and it's going to be a puck out for Jesse McMahon. Good, good ball by um, good ball by O'Shea. I thought he was going to shoot, but he gave a great ball in to, to Tierney. He's a danger man. Get the ball into him. But um, as I said, good ball in, and Bearfoot just needs to get one or two more scores. And they, as I said, they, sh they should see this game out. But um, good intense battle so far, Sean. 
Another man that was named to start but didn't, number six, Danny Redden, uh, is entering the fay and it's uh, we're number 26 but started with number 12, Dermot Maloney has midway. So we're starting here now, JC McMahon pucks that ball out on top of the half forward line, up they all go, a great take there by Redden after he's just coming onto the fray and he looks for that crossfield ball, looking for Donny who hasn't seen much action in the second half after his three points in the first, he's then is just to stay and play inside in the corner, working his way out as far as the 21, gets his strike off, goes for his own score, it's travelling over the bar, I think. And that is a big score for Profford. That is, that is some score. Kind of like the score John Conlon got against Dublin here a few years ago in the Paris 2012. But that is some score off the left. Um, the right man had a kind of ball into the corner. But... Um, Two point game now and Bradford have it again. Chaplin. Craig Chaplin takes the puck out and Craig looks for a crossfield ball as he hits it inside. It's going to drop here in the middle and Stefan is uh, trying to get over that ball. He kicks it again looking for Whelan. Dooney and Ste- the two of them there together and it's Stefan that has it pulled to the ground and it's going to be a free in now and at 111 to 12 points you can see you, you get this score and all of a sudden we're back to one. Yeah, L- Lendy's after lamping him there. Probably the ball will be probably brought in but um, brought in but if they get the ball down this wing... Um, McMahon and Whelan, they're, they're working well there the last few minutes. They're their danger, man. Hickey's going to hit this again. Oh, this is a big free. Now. There's a bit of pressure on him after missing the last one, but um, like he's plenty of experience instead. So it slots this over, point game, and all to play for. So Padraig Hickey now standing over this free, which, as we say, with uh, 27 minutes played at 1-11 to 12, this is the opportunity to bring it back to a one-point game. He lifts and he strikes, and I don't think there's any doubt in that, but we're heading into the last three minutes and only a point between them. Yeah, good, 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 good score there, Sean, but uh, mispicked it, but sign a good free taker, mispicked it, but st- still got the point. So Paul Madden now pucks it out and he's looking for Keane Barron again. Keane gets his pass to it, gets his control and a great block down there uh, by Cahill Chaplin. Cahill got the play but Keane gets it back and gets his delivery in. Puts it in as far as O'Neill himself and Donlan are having some battle inside. And this time Owen Donlan came out but he's turned it over and Brawford have managed to regather position and get their clearance down but only as far as Darrow O'Shea. Darrow O'Shea has time to strike but he went looking for Cahill Rewind. The pass didn't go to hand and it's Brawford who brings it out. And back there Craig Chaplin again Craig delivering a ball in it's going to beat Aaron it's going to go in as, as far as that full forward line there and Taylor is in over the ball but he just can't win possession he's staying there he has it now Taylor has it he gets his shot off and the umpire goes and we're level pegging with 28 minutes played 111 to 14 points all square heading into the last two yeah but better for four up as I said at that stage we've got one or two more scores you should see him out but fair juice to Broadford they're back in the game level game and this could go anyway Sean Darrow O'Shea gives it back as far as Jarla. Jarla Collin delivers the ball in, but only as far as Darrow Whelan there in the corner. Darrow gets it and he gets it out as far as Chaplin. Chaplin hits the ball down long, looking for Donny Whelan. Donny Whelan is up contesting. He breaks the ball down. Will he get another opportunity? Donny has it in the hand. He gets his strike off. It's travelling crossways. Is it going to hold its trajectory? Yes, it is. And Bradford are in the lead. Yeah, touch of class. He was a danger man, Barefield should have double marked him. I know it's easy to talk after, but that was that was some score again off the left. And if Broadford win this match, he'll be hero tonight in Broadford. And like we're just looking at it, looking at the amount of ball he got early in the second half. We we hadn't mentioned his yeah. name for a long time and all of a sudden he's popped up with two monster scores from. Well it wasn't his fault, the ball just wasn't going into him, Sean, but like the last five minutes they picked him out and they'll have some night tonight in Denny's if 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 they bring the cup home. So here we are now, 111 to 15 points with 28 minutes and 10 seconds played. Ball has been pucked out and Bearfield need to get their hands on it, but it's Brawford who break it down. Hickey's going after it, but it's that man McMahon. He kicks it, ball is travelling too far out over the sideline and it's going to be a line ball to Bearfield. Yeah, he probably should have been down with two hands. But he's probably running too fast, he's so quick. Um, four minutes of additional time now, Sean, so plenty of time for Bearfield to get an equaliser or, or even a winner, so this game is, is far from over. So it's Aaron Landy again. Aaron is going to stand over this line ball as he tries to put Bearfield onto the attack. And they're looking for that equalising score again just as we pass the 30 minute mark. So Aaron doesn't get under the ball at all. Cahill Chaplin, raw for captain, is trying to get over it. He gets that ball into his hand. Del- gets a quick swivel, turns and delivers it back into that same corner, looking for that same man, but it's Thomas Heher this time, Thomas has the ball, he's breaking out, has it back in the hurley, looking ahead pressure on him all the time from Padraig Hickey the ball touches a bit, or the Broadford hurley, Kyle Chaplin comes out, it's going to be a line ball, it's going to be a line ball to Bearfield Yeah, Chaplin in the last five minutes um, he's cleared three or four balls just down here in front of us, he went wholeheartedly there, that ball there was no, there was no malice in that challenge, just Two of them went, went ball-tethered at it, and the two of them are down now, so they'll be stoppage here for a minute or two, Sean. 
That's it, and it, it's about cam mines and clear heads now at this stage. As we're just going to 30 and a half minutes or three and a half minutes roughly to play, uh, but it'll be all at Jarlett's call as to exactly because we'll probably have a bit extra with these injuries here. One of them definitely looks like it's a head injury, and we're going to give time to ensure that he's assessed properly before restarting but uh, from Bearfield's point of view they really want to try and get level now and after being reeled in from four up to one down they don't want to, to concede again yeah they just probably want to get Conroy on the ball get, get him a half a chance to, to, to have a shot um, they need to work they, they will get a chance to work one more score to get a draw and I think a draw probably is a fair result brought for probably on top in the first half Bearfield in the second half so I think a draw is probably a fair result on, to, on today's performance from both sides and Jack Hannon now is placing the ball. Jack is going to take this sideline cut and he gets underneath the ball and a great delivery in as far as Alan O'Neill. But Alan isn't going to come out. It's going to break. It's going to break as far as the goal scorer. He swivels. He turns. It's hit the post. Gone out and gone wide and very unlucky there for Conor Tierney. Yeah, unlucky from Tierney. He showed well again. But um, look, there's still, there's still time to get another shot. So they'll have another opportunity, hopefully. JC McMahon has been told here from the sideline to slow down, slow down, take your time and make sure you deliver it long. So here goes JC down the stand up side as we head down in, it's dropping now on top of the half back line and all of a sudden it's going to be a line ball and the line ball Andy McMahon says is going to be to Bearfield so it's going to all this stop start really is helping Broford just oh keep yeah. the score to keep the time ticking away. Yeah that's all they want just to slow the game down or they're a point ahead and like the hurt of the last few finals which they've been defeated that, sh that should really be uh, uh, ramming home to now and they, they, will, hope, they, they will look to, to see out this game the line cut goes in but it's Craig Chaplin that's heading over towards it Craig nearly taken off it by his brother Cahill and now all of a sudden between them they look to have turned it over but Cahill has it again it's Cahill that's breaking out head up and a long clearance and it's not it's actually Paddy Donnell and Paddy has it the yellow helmet's confusing me in it goes as far as that man wheel and Donny's looking to, to win it ball is still on the ground Aaron Landy and Donny battling Donny's flicking once too many and it's going to be a free out and a free out to Bearfield Landy gets it he's trying to bring the ball forward and here he goes, putting it down, put a bit of pushing and shoving, and if they're not careful, he's going to bring this ball forward. Yeah, just just hit, leave the ball down and hit it, Aaron, because Jared probably throw, it's going to throw it in. Oh, and no, he's bringing it up. He's bringing it up. Um, I bring out Madden now to hit this. Um, Madden could have a shot at it and may, maybe score it, but Lendy's he's trying to steal a few yards again. He's being cute, but um, this this ball needs to stick now inside. This this ball can't go dead. It can't go wide. Iron Landy now with the free with 33 minutes played and he gets going it's going to stay in play it's going to go dropping in around the big square but there again is is who is it? it's Craig Chaplin that catches it Craig has it he's breaking out and that man Tierney following him all the time the pressure that Tierney's put on all second half and on the chasing ball here it's turned over it's going to be a pick up from Bearfield and a free out a huge sigh of relief here from Brawford as they get the opportunity to settle it down and deliver the ball into the Bearfield square yeah, just tiredness there again. Bearfield have been sloppy, but um, look, Bradford, as I said, they'll be delighted with that. Chaplin, Chaplin could uh, could actually score this with the with the, with the slight um, slight breeze, but um, as I said, Bradford will be delighted, and it's looking like it's Bradford's day. So it's their captain now with 33, 46 on the clock. Cahill Chaplin standing over this free in his own half back line. You expect it to land inside in the square, but he actually goes for the corner flag. Anywhere as long as it stays in play will be fine, and it's actually going to be a line ball. And Bearfield are going to have to, I suppose, build from the from the corner back spot if they're going to get this equaliser. Yeah, he, he hit it down there to the Val Dunlan corner. Um, probably the cute, the cute thing to do, get it as far away from his own goal as possible. Um, and Bearford are going to find it very hard to work it out from here. Maybe he should go back to the goalie with it and he might be able to strike it long. So here we are waiting now and we have just got, we've gone 20 seconds over that four minutes. So it's all at Jarlett's call now at the moment. Who's going to win it? It looks like it's going to travel out. It's going to be a line ball. It's going to be a line ball to Brawford. Again, they'll take their time. They'll take this thing out of it. And they'll be hoping that at the end of this strike that Jarlett will blow the whistle. Yeah, they will. Um, I think Hickey should drive this ball wide. Um, just, just kill it, uh, hit it wide, and I'd say Jared will blow the whistle. And yeah. he's going into the corner to Stefan McMahon. Actually, Stefan has the ball in his hand. He turns, he swivels, he strikes. It is going to go wide, and it's going to be a puck out. Is Jared going to allow time? He is indeed. So Shane Taylor stands in front of Paul Madden, but he's not. It's all over. And Broadford are intermediate hurling champions in Clare for 2019, having taken victory on a 15 to 111 scoreline. Four points down at one stage in the second half. And they're now after getting their senior status back for 2020. Yeah, fair play to them. They dug it out in the last the game looked to be gone from, but 
Look, you can see what it means from there. They're, they're, they're jumping like mad below here. And look, they've been hurt. I suppose they're beating in 15, beating my Bearfield in 16. Um, and in fairness, they're a great club. They've, they've lovely hurdlers on in Broadford. And uh, look, they, they probably just about deserved it on the balance play in the last 10 minutes. They were, they, they showed yeah, yeah, a, hu a huge victory for them, as you say. They, they lost the finals of 15, they lost the final in 16. And all of a sudden, this is their year. They weren't going to lose three in a row, having been in three of the last five. And uh, a, a huge performance in the last 10 minutes when they were four points down to come back and win that game. Yeah, like they also lost the Battle Royale last year against Fiekel below, below on the bridge. It was a serious battle there. I think it was, was there two or three games in it. So they've been knocking on the door. Like, and, and in fairness, they, they deserve today's victory. I know Bearfield will be hurting today, but they'll be back. They're a serious club. They have serious young hurdlers coming through as well. So they, they, they'll be definitely back as well. And we look at that second half, and uh, as we spoke about him there with the two points in a row, a huge momentum string when Donny Whelan got those two points in the corner. Oh yeah, Donny was on one today. He was showed some serious, uh, serious skill there off the left. They got the ball into them. They got to, got to the ball to the right minute. In fairness, and there wasn't much, that much ball going in. To be honest, Barefoot were probably well on top in the second half, but it wasn't shown on the scoreboard. I thought when they got the goal that it might it might give them the momentum swing, but they got the ball into Whelan, and Whelan took two unbelievable scores to win the game from. And I suppose that battling quality that they've showed time in, time out, and uh, you, you were always looking at Bearfield having been 10 points down and gone 10 every time against, uh, against Gareth the last day, thinking they'll get that opportunity. But unfortunately for them, it just didn't come. But uh, you can't deny, the, I suppose, the level of uh, aggression and uh, I suppose the honesty that they put into their performance as well. Bearfield, yeah, like they've, they've went to the well against Tubber, they went to the well against Gareth. I suppose it's hard to go back again. Um, they had a serious, serious shot in that match. Um, ser serious contest look they're very disappointed under their, but as I said they're very young they'll be back but uh, today is Broadford's day and fair play to them and they'll have some night tonight in Broadford yeah we're just uh, looking out at the scenes here as the supporters just come out onto the field and uh, you can see what it means to Broadford as you say having uh, I suppose last year with the three game saga for Fiekel and Fiekel yeah. going on to win it having lost the two finals that this this really means an awful lot to them you can see the, the celebrations. Like I think their big players really stood up. Uh, Cahill Chaplin there in the last seven or eight minutes cleared ball after ball. Darren came into it. Craig, Craig hit a few balls. So like they, they'll be all happy. Like F F Stephon McMahon was kept relatively quiet by, by Jay inside. Taylor was kind of quiet enough in the second half as well. But Whelan and, and the Chaplins really, really came good. And look, they, they just about deserved the victory today. Yeah, and we're just looking out now at the moment. And... Uh just waiting for the, I suppose, for the, the, the Broadford captain, uh, Cahill Chaplin, to go up and we'll, we'll go down into the presentation. But uh, I suppose, look, just ju just looking at it and, and, and looking at some of those, like, you, as you say, that uh, we say Dermot Whedon was quiet, maybe Stefan was quiet and that, but uh, they found new heroes today that uh, maybe weren't there this morning. Well, that's it. Like, some some lads stuck their hands up um, and that's that's always the way in finals. Obviously, the main lads would obviously be watched and uh, Bearfield had their, their homework done, but lads, lads took up their, their hands and uh, they'll be delighted tonight heading into Munster Club. And from a Bearfield point of view, I suppose, uh, they did, like Alan O'Neill, uh, the amount, he, he caused an awful lot of damage inside, um, but I suppose the, the return off it probably wasn't uh, as high as they would have hoped for at the end of it. No, every time he got the ball, there was two or three lads hanging off him, and it's, it's very hard to do anything, like, but maybe th there should have been runners, or maybe he should have laid it off, but um, like Gila was kind of quite by his own standards. Tierney, in fairness, Tierney looked dangerous. He's a lively forward, but um, look, they've, 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 they're young, they have a future and they'll be back and I'm sure that it's not long before they, they, they will be senior. So, now here we go and we can see him making his way through with Christy Ryan, uh, the Broadford captain here, Cahill Chaplin, just making his way past the, uh, past the Bearfield panel who, uh, who have stayed on to obviously watch the presentation and uh, he's going to head up those steps and, uh, and collect the, which uh, now creates an eight, I think, uh, intermediate championship for Broadford, which makes them uh, the number one cleared club to have won the intermediate championship now gone one, a one ahead of, uh, of the seven that they were on. Yeah, fair play to them. They're, um, they're a serious club and I'm sure they're going to stay senior for, for a long time. They've, there was always great hurdles in Broadford and they have a quite young panel. I know Parakiki come on there and Angus are, are the only two older statesmen, but uh, fair play to them and best of luck to them in the future. So, it's going downstairs now to Joe Cooney in the presentation. We make the presentation, please. We're Broadford moving this direction, please. Well done, Colin. Thanks, Joe. Thanks very much. Okay, can we have your attention? Yeah. 
Okay. Are we nearly ready? Ready, Ocean. Have the card again. First of all, on behalf of Claire G. I'd like to thank Judith Parkfield Committee for the excellent condition the pitch has been in today. As you're all well aware, that don't happen by accident. That takes a lot of hard work for the creature that's involved here seven days a week. And I'd like a big round of applause for Cunic Park, Park Commission. I'd like to thank Charlotte Donlan and his officials for the handling of the game. Done a brilliant job. And he can be very proud where he handled today's game, a tough game. And I'd like a round of applause for Charlie Brandon Murphy and his officials. I want to compliment both teams, St. Joseph's to Bearfield and Brawford in reaching today's Intermediate Championship final. As we all know, you don't reach a final easily. It takes a hard, a hard work, dedication and commitment in reaching the final. St. Joseph Royal Bearfield, you can be very proud of reaching today's final and playing your part in what has been an excellent intermediate final. You have a great underage structure, you have a great committee and club officers out there. You can be part of what you are achieving also got the major football semi final last week. That takes hard work and dedication. Well done, St. Joseph's, and a round of applause for St. Joseph's GA Club. <laughs> Crawford, this has been a fantastic year for you. It's probably one of your best years in history. Again, you have an outstanding underage structure. Already won the under 15 final, you've contested an under 16 final, you've won the under 21 B final. But what you've achieved here today by winning this intermediate championship with a young team is a great, great gesture of what the club has been doing, not alone as underage, but as adult level as well. Club officers, the commissions, the backroom teams, the managers, and especially the players here today can be very, very proud of what you've achieved. It's 11 years since you've won the Intermediate Championship, and now on behalf of Claire GA, I'm going to present the Paddy Brown Memorial Trophy to the captain of the winning Bradford team, Carl Chaplin. Not very good at Irish, so I'll stick away from that. Um, just on behalf of Broadford, I'd like to thank the county board um, for the facilities here today. They're absolutely outstanding. The pitch, we couldn't have an abs uh, a bad word to say about it with all the rain that's fallen. So thanks very much to the Clare County Board for that. Um, just on behalf of myself, I'm absolutely delighted to be up here accepting this cup on behalf of all these bunch of players down here. We started out in January, and our target was to get back here, and we got back here and we won it. So. Well done, lads. Savage achievement by all of us. Um, look, uh, just a small few thanks to a few lads out that worked with us all during the year. Um, first of all, I suppose I'll start with high ball specialist uh, Tony O'Brien. Uh, then uh, Pai Poland for all the training that he's done all year. Uh, John Carkin as well. And uh, Alex Coyne. And of course, the Broffer man Tom Howard. <coughs> And <clears throat> I 
I'd also like to thank um, Kieran Corcoran there. He came on board for the last four weeks, five weeks, training us. Uh, the effort he's put in since he came with us was absolutely outstanding. Um, I suppose Claire's loss was again at the towards the end of the year. So thanks very much, Kieran. Uh, and then I suppose I'll move to our statistician, David Boland. He's been there every, every game, challenge matches, uh, Clare Cup games, championship games with the camera, doing all the camera work. So thanks very much, David. I'd also like to thank uh, Willie Wixted and Tom Marsh, Willie for the protein shakes that he's supplied us all year, and Tom Marsh for the, the lovely tops that we got for the final today. Um, look, I don't have much more to say, uh, but Bearfield, uh, it's hard pill to sw swallow. We were here ourselves in that pitch three years ago, and we thought we'd get back there the following year, but you'd have to push hard to get back here again. You're a credit to your club and you're a credit to yourself. Hard luck today, and just three, chip, three cheers for Bearfield. Hip hip. Hip hip. Hip hip. And I'm sure we'll see you tomorrow night. All and boo. Joined here now by Broadford captain Cahill Chaplin just after receiving the, the Intermediate Championship Cup. Cahill, uh, I suppose, what are the feelings? Uh, unbelievable. Uh, tough game. Uh, savage to get back in uh, win under our belts. We're down for five years now and uh, just to get a win is unbelievable. I think the, during the week we kind of hit the nail on the head when uh, we were asked what's the most memorable game. I'd say a lot of the young fellas there couldn't remember a game that they've actually won or a big game. So it was savage to get a big win today and get her off back up scene. And from your own point of view, I suppose you suffered a disappointment in 15 and 16. You did a three-game saga for peak. So finally to be up receiving that cup, senior that regained, that must uh, give a huge pleasure to you. Yeah, it's, it's been a long five years, but I said the week, um, we've kind of, we were very young when we were in 15 and 16. I think our, our average age of the panel was 19. And the last four or five years, there's no harm either because we've matured an awful lot in the last couple of months and oh, since the faecal game last year I think we've all really matured an awful lot and you can see after we went down the goal we kicked on and we, we got to win and now it, uh, I suppose it hasn't even crossed your mind but obviously you go on now to represent the county in Munster Club and uh, gives you an opportunity to hurl on for a bit longer yeah I actually don't even know it's on <laughs> but I suppose we'll enjoy this weekend and I suppose it'll pull us into trend and they'll choose our wins and we'll focus on the Munster campaign and we'll see what happens with it and I suppose from your own personal point of view, Captain, and with the year that you've had, I suppose when you're returning really come to the final stage and having to look on at the earlier stages, it, it must be give you a huge pleasure for the, for the year this, the, this way where you're standing up here with the cup in your hand. Yeah, uh, four and a half months ago, I didn't think I'd be standing up here receiving a cup because I was searching my back and everything. So um, the, the, I think the bridge match was one of the hardest matches I've ever watched. Uh, and then well, thankfully I got back and oh, thanks to that we got up here. Lovely call. Go down and enjoy the celebrations and thanks very much. Oh, okay, thanks well much. done. Thanks, John. So uh, that brings an end to our coverage for today as Broughford are crowned Intermediate Hurling Champions of Clare for 2019. We wish them all success in the Munster Club. We thank everybody for watching and we'd just like to let people know that we will be streaming the Minor Hurling Final live tomorrow from about 10 to 1 uh, on at 1 o'clock and uh, we'd encourage all interested to tune in and watch that. We have Clare Castle uh, obviously taking on uh, Aina Hilamon in that one and, uh, or sorry, Clare Castle taking on Cora Finn Rowan in that one having defeated Aina Hilamon in the semi-final and uh, we'd encourage everyone to, to tune in enjoy it but for now it's Broadford's day it's Broadford's night hopefully they enjoy their celebrations and we wish them all the very best representing the county in the Munster Club